Yeah, baby. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithm. No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision. I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis. Our information's predetermined by some biased business. We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors. I'm done with paper chasing to come on to bigger banquets. It's that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday. Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth day in here. Extra fruit, hey, the brand. You can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but this grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stand and Yeah, it took some hard work, blind up, play a huge role And they say that I don't, when they're feeding you fool's gold And if I know one thing, the truth's home Even if it's a tough thing to swallow An even harder thing to hold And truly know without a doubt while on the globe Even though that seems inherent It ain't always so apparent Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it But don't worry, it's a pretty February In a year with more to carry And more days is yet to come Under the sun taking the ferry to the city Where the moment's extra pretty Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain That isn't equal to the real world all that stress ain't saving me, fear though. I swear to God, I'm trying. But they pushing the demons down my esophagus. Screaming the easy life, what I want always. Praise me to holidays. Tell me that love is the answer just to boost this economy. But I'm more sell now, but I ain't following. I ain't a hollow man. I'm full of them fall winds. Take it all with a tall crane. And if you feel it, do it with me and just sing with the song. Say it all for what it is. What it is, what it is, what it is. It ain't all so big. So big, so big, so big. Take it all for what it is. It ain't all, all so big. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, SB. Dearly beloved. And it is unsolicited. And guess what? <laughs> we got another good Friday. <laughs> I hope everybody is having an outstanding day. I am enjoying myself. It's hot as fish grease outside. But listen, I hope y'all staying cool and ready for an outstanding show. So listen. Thank y'all for being here, as always. Listen, we started on Good Friday, and it's been Good Friday ever since. And it's all because of you all. So welcome to SB Nation. And today, if y'all haven't uh, checked it out yet, oh, let me just say this, because I want y'all to know. We're just, um, you know, the 4 o'clock was outstanding, but we're just doing some different times just to see what's best. You know, we're trying to make sure that you guys are in a safe place so y'all can tune in. So y'all can help me with these things that we're talking about. We just want to have a conversation. So we just want to make sure that you all are in place, not driving down the street, you know, not, you know, messing around with the kids, whatever. We just want to make sure everything is good. And we're just trying to find that perfect timing. So just work with us. And we're going to definitely put out uh, publications or notices of what time we're going to be here. So I appreciate you all for just paying attention. Thank you so much for that. Now, today's topic is does a good man fulfill a woman's purpose? We're going to get there. And y'all know I'm going to have some of my crazy stories because I've been married for so long. I got a lot of them. And, I, I, you know, look, I wouldn't be doing any woman any justice by making her feel like I'm the person that I am now, that I was that play it, that way at 25. I'll be telling a lie because <laughs> I wasn't. So I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell everybody what everyone needs to know. I'm going to give my opinion, okay? But you know what? This is what's working for me. And I hope and pray if somebody you know, get something from it. It will work for you also. But before we get started, I'm going to go back a little bit, have a little announcements that we're going to make. First thing is, I appreciate all of you who have decided to become a part of SB Nation, the five star club. <laughs> and you're going over to uh, my channel and you're going to SB gear and you're picking up something, a hat, a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, whatever it is. And I'm just seeing this, these five stars everywhere. And I appreciate it so much. That is one day y'all we're going to meet and I'm going to everybody had a five stars on and I'm going to, that's how I'm going to recognize y'all. But listen, that is outstanding. I appreciate y'all for doing that. Continue to support. And I just love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Also, you know, I choose you. It's back. 
We're coming with the commercial soon, guys. You know, we can be busy, y'all. And it takes a lot of work to do this stuff, but don't worry about it. JR Wisdom is the next bash bachelor. We're putting together a commercial and ad so you all can get familiar with him. And listen, bachelorettes, ladies that are looking for a man, make sure you're single. Single as in not married, not separated from your husband a long period of time. I'm saying not married. Have not said the nuptials. And if you have, you divorce. I need you to go over to SB Show 2020 and leave me a little note saying that, can I participate? I would appreciate it so much. But anyway, just wanted to let y'all know that um, I Choose You is coming back. JR Wisdom is the bachelor and I'm looking for bachelorettes. So let's just get it started. And we'll come. You all will have some... Um, We'll have some commercials and you'll get to hear Jr. and and understand and see what he wants and ladies, what he's looking for. He's a cool dude. If y'all have not yet, go over and check out his content, Jr. Wisdom, and you'll appreciate it. He's funny. He's good. Got a good sense of humor. It's just good. I need y'all to do that. Um, what else is there? I think that's about it for now. But guess what, y'all? I'm going to say hello to a few people in the chat and then we're going to get started. And again, make sure when you're coming into the live. You giving us a thumbs up, giving me a thumbs up. Oh, and don't let me forget. Did I not mention my co-host, Mr. Boss? Dearly beloved. Y'all know when the camera comes on, Mr. Boss is the person that turns it on. And for all of you all that didn't know, this is a two-party show at all times. Myself and Mr. Boss, he's always there. So we thank and appreciate him so very much. But I was leaving him out in the beginning. I wasn't quite leaving him out, but I just wasn't shouting him out. But now I decided I need to shout him out. Maybe he'll work harder. What y'all think? Probably not. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. But anyway, Stephen Day, it's always good to see you. You always listen. You're such an outstanding supporter. M. Mills, we missed you the other day, I think. But it's good to see you. Elena, good to see you. Welcome to SB Nation. Shelby, Bobby M., it's so good to see you guys. Thank you for being here. King Thanos, Shelby, it's good to see you guys. Thank y'all for being here and supporting me. You know, riding the six. Hello, how are you? Because listen, when it comes time to drop that link, I am going to make sure that some of y'all are in that in that conversation with me today because I'm talking to the ladies today. Thank y'all. Jennifer, Miss Jennifer, thank you. BBB, Big Bad Bull. Hello. Mr. C, how are you doing? CC, I think I saw CC also. So listen, um, I want y'all to participate because ladies, this is a ladies day. You know, it's going to be a good conversation <laughs> Thank you, Cece. This is going to be a good conversation. It may not be easy. I don't know, guys. It might, even, it might even, I hope it lands well. But this is for the ones that are wanting to be married. And even for the ones that are married. Um, you know, this is something, you know, like last Friday. Let's just go back a little bit. Last Friday, I did a show. It was a good Friday, though. I did a show. And on that show, I mentioned that... Um, have we been, were we given good examples or were we taught to fail? And I thought about it. I told you I thought about it. And the reality of it is I really do think that we were taught to fail. We were, we were. Um, and what I mean by that is we were not taught and the examples that we saw were not good. No, nah, we, mom and daddy was doing all kinds of crazy thing, crazy things. And y'all know it. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the one to admit, to admit that little podcast. How you doing? It's good to see you. I'm glad you could make it. Um, so today though, I'm taking all the excuses away. I'm starting with my girls. I love you all, but we'd be running out around out here with some wrong information. And this feminist movement has definitely, uh, is overtaking what we're supposed to be doing. And I would love for the women to be able to relax and be who they are. Cause we are so strong when we were in our roles and we don't even know it. We don't even know it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this thing. And I, of course, I want you all to chime in with me. But before I do that, let's talk about the money line song. Just in case there's somebody that is their first time being here today, I still talk about it for a little bit and let them know how it goes. Y'all know I read all super chats. If for some reason I did not read your super chat, please forgive me. We just didn't see it. Um, the second thing, if it's $9.99 and up, you will get the money line song. Money line, I'm gonna run it every time. Goes like that. Money line, going up, you know the crime. Money line. So I got to tell y'all a couple things. The money line has a purpose. Um, 
and and the, if you've been in SB Nation in its period of time, you probably noticed by now. Sometimes it gets heavy, y'all. It gets heavy, and when it gets heavy, we want to hit a money line because it just breaks all of that monotony. You know, we get to laugh, we get to move a little bit, we get to breathe because we want to have the conversations. I want to hear everybody, whether they agree or disagree with me, whether they are uh, talking crazy, jumping off the roof, whatever it is. I want to I want to be there right there before they jump so I can maybe say something to make them not jump. But I still want to hear about it. I want to hear the mindsets. I want to hear the beliefs that we have. I want to hear it all so we can have a good conversation and then put it back in the road. Not saying that I know everything or that I'm even right about anything, but I give you a different way of thinking. How about that? Remember, this is unsolicited. Y'all didn't ask me for it, but I'm going to continue to give it to you anyway. So, um, Gerard, how are you? Red lipstick vibes. Hope you are doing well. Listen, I need an update. Because didn't you tell me you were going to let me do you and your man? Did, did, can I say I could marry you all? Didn't you say I could marry? I told you I would do the, the $50. Remember, I told you you could do that after pay stuff with the fee. You didn't have to pay me. I could do it. So red lipstick vibes, don't forget that. I'll, I'll hook y'all up. Hey, Hank. Hope you're doing good. B, Hello. It's good to see you. But anyway, Mr. Steele, it is so good to see you guys. Listen, hey, yeah, Aaron. <laughs> How y'all doing? But anyway, listen, guys. May 27th, what's happening May 20th? You want me to do it? You want me? I can do it. We can do it virtual. I'll hook you up, girl. We're going to talk. SB Show 2020. Go ahead. Go back. You listen. We can do what you call that stuff when you do it on credit. I'll do it for free. I'll be there. <laughs> I will be there. Red List Advice, congratulations. Oh, my God. This is so good to hear. You're going to try to keep it a secret. I dare you. Come sneaking in here and ain't saying nothing. I have to pull it out of you. Lynn Love, I like that. I love that. Hey, how are you? But anyway, girls, ladies, I'm sorry. This is for you all because um, I wish, I wish, I wish I had someone that could talk to me the way I'm talking. I want to talk to you all. Uh, and men, I'm here. I'm, you're here. Uh, I want to hear from you too because um, I never did get a chance to ask my husband today what role he plays in this. So I'm, I'm gonna be bouncing off of y'all. So you know, men, I'm gonna be bouncing off of y'all, and, and he's in the background too because I, I just don't know. I don't know everything, but I'm, I tell you all my experiences, uh, things I struggled with, and my thoughts. So this is where we are. And what it is is, uh, does a good man fulfill a woman's purpose and then we got the little slash there and it's the individuality because it was one thing uh that i hear so much from women that are married and um i think um it started for me here recently over at sir hell sir hell shout out to you you always be making me think but over at sir hell's channel um we talked about how women often um feel as though they're losing themselves they're losing their individuality when they get married and um you know, I have to think about this stuff because I have to, you know, check myself and see, like, do I feel like I'm you know, what are you supposed to be doing? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? How do you feel? And, you know, of course, my first response is no, because I'm all about marriage and the nuclear family. And I feel like that's the answer to where we got to be to put some kind of a discipline, a normal life back into our children, some kind of balance back into this world to to just go on into the next generation without chaos. This is what my thoughts are. This is this is where I feel like we need to be. So of course I'm gonna say no to anything that would be negative spoken about a marriage. <laughs> Before I even think about it, it's a no. So anyway, but I did think about it. And uh with the end of hey Gretchen, thank you. Uh, as far as the individuality goes, I said my my comment, my response to that was no. Um Actually, what happens is when you become married, you become a better person, right? I said you become a better person and you don't lose yourself. You just become better at who you are. You're just a different person. And I'm still standing true on that because once before I got married, I was a single woman. I had a single mindset and my thoughts was me, right? I didn't have to think about no man, no house, no food, big bad bull. Remember I told y'all? Food wouldn't it. I wasn't thinking about feeding nobody but being my child, right? So I didn't care about food, married life, family, nuclear. None of that made any difference to me because I was a single woman and those are my thoughts. Then I got married. Now, right away, being married, you know, now you got, you married your boyfriend. Let's just keep it all the way real. You married your boyfriend. He was cute. He had a purpose. He was smart. He kicked in doors and he looked good. How about that? We're going to just go with that. So then you move into that. That was the one you need to marry because, you, you know, he had the basics. You know, the attraction was there. 
He loved the Lord. You know, hey, y'all, why people don't say that no more? Women, why y'all don't say that? It used to be back in the day, you ask a woman what, what she wants in her man. The first thing she said, I just want a man to love the Lord. Is that not important anymore? Or, well, anyway, that's just another question for another day. Y'all something to think about. So anyway, he had all of that. But then um, now it's time to figure this thing out, y'all. You remember I told y'all about us figuring it out in the beginning and, and all the different things with the money, bouncing checks left and right. What are we doing wrong? You know, talk to the pastor, a little counseling, you know, put it all in one pot. It worked. Um, and it worked for me. It really, really worked for me. Now, let me just say this, though, because even though I didn't know everything about being married, I knew that I needed to be married. I knew and I saw my mom be a wife. I really knew I needed to be married. Now, see, that's something that escapes us this day. Right now, the time that we in, women have no idea that they need, and I said need, to be married. I know some of y'all sitting back saying, no, security boss, I don't need no man. I don't need it. I promise you guys, you need to be married. Not everybody will be married. You won't. You won't. So I'm with you on that. But there is a need. And back then, I didn't have anything over my eyes that kept me from wanting or needing to be married. You know, I just thought that's just where I evolved into. That was what I evolved into. And it worked for me. And I did not fight it. It was good. That's what I needed to be doing at that point in time in my life. Now you got the feminist movement. You got the Me Too movement. You got the... Uh, the, the alphabet crew, y'all got so many things that are distracting you from evolving into that natural part of who you should be. And I get it. I get it. But what I'm challenging you all to do is to become independent in your thought process. And when I say that, what that means is this. Get, go back to why and who created you. Figure out where I came from. What, I'm a woman. And I'm, I'm saying go a little deeper than your mom and daddy. Yeah, they contributed, but let's go deeper. Where did I come from? Why was I eat? What is my purpose? Dearly beloved. I need y'all to think about it. You got to get out of this. We got to get out of this world and all these things that the world has distracted you. So you just to take you off your purpose and get back to what your purpose really is. And then you will realize that I need to be married. Because there's so many things that come with being married and you have your individual roles also. And we're going to talk about the wife's role in being married. And when I tell you about these things, it's going to start to make sense. And if it don't, I want to hear about it. I want to hear why it makes no sense. I want to hear about why. No, I can't do that. I want to hear about why my career comes first, because we're going to talk about that, too. Because, listen, I'm a real woman. I am a real woman. I have these real thoughts. I am you. Or I was you. However you want to say it. But anyway, make sure when you're coming into the live, guys, you giving me the thumbs up. Let's take a minute to give me the thumbs up. up. And listen, listen, this is an important one, y'all. I feel like I'm doing pretty good, too. So y'all help me out with this. I need for you all to share this video because this is a real thing. This is this could be like the deal breaker <laughs> or the breaking of the ice, however you want to say it. But. We're going back to the creator and who did it and why and what was the purpose and all that. Because so now we're talking purpose. And little podcast, you helped me out with this last week, too, because um, we often do struggle with purpose and purpose being, you know, connected to career and what should I be doing and all of that stuff. Right. And it's hard because you got these people who are like dialed in. They know exactly what they're doing. They're on and it seemed like it came so easy. And then here we are here struggling. What? What? Purpose. I get me a good job. Yeah, I like doing that. You know, all of that. It makes no sense, right? It ain't it ain't coming together. So you're exactly right. So anyway, I'm going to say this again. So all those women, I'm challenging you. I am challenging you to go back and just think about the purpose for us being here as a woman. We're going to have a little bit of a class and then we're going to continue for it. But I ain't going to take y'all like that. We're going to just have conversations and I, I want to hear what you all got to say about it. Um, as a woman, y'all know how we were created. We were created from a man for the purpose, you know, from the rib of the man. We're a woman. So our purpose would be definitely tied to him or to them. So then we're going to just skip a whole lot of stuff because y'all can go read the book and figure out what happens. But then we're going to go all the way to the marriage. So in marriage, wouldn't you still think that your purpose would be tied directly to him which is now your husband, you're still a woman 
directly tied to your husband, who is a man. We were made from him. So let me tell y'all my struggles, guys, because I got to tell you something. You know, God is good. Y'all, he just helps you out. He helps me out so much. But in the beginning, and uh, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this at all, but I need to tell you. My whole every all of me, my whole being has always wanted to be ultimately a judge. Ultimately, I was supposed to wear the black robe. Hearts and desires, black robe, me. <laughs> But along the way, y'all know it's things you have to do. You have to go to school, you know, become a lawyer. Then you be, you know, picked as a judge or however you get into your judgeship. But that's who I wanted to be. That was my career path. That was who I wanted to be. Can't y'all see me in a black robe? Tell the truth. But that's who I wanted to be. So, you know, as my husband and I, you know, got married, we were married and was going through the trials and doing little different things, you know, becoming one. Because that's what marriage is supposed to do for you. Becoming one with my spouse, me adapting to him and who he is and the kind of man he is, what he moves and what he needs me to do. Um, you know, just living life, just becoming one, knowing each other, becoming one flesh. Because that's what a woman, a one man and a man does in marriage. You know, you begin to learn each other, talk to each other. You know, you feel you, you just it just begins to work for you. It should. It should. Now, I think I need to say that all again. A woman comes from a man. That's the creation of the woman, right? So what wouldn't it just make sense that our purpose would be for the man? It makes good sense to me. Now, if y'all struggling with it, I want to hear about it later. Because so often I hear about this individual individuality. What about me? What about my career? What am I supposed to do? And pr y'all, I promise you I asked the same question because just being a wife was not enough. Not for the judge. The judge wanted the black robe. I was self-seeking. I needed the robe. I picked up on my gifts. I knew what I was good at. I picked up on it. Some of y'all might pick up on it too. I knew what I was blessed with. I knew my gifts. I knew them. So I, want, I wanted my gifts and my career to be one. I didn't, the husband was there. He did. He did. But I wanted the gifts that I was given from the creator. And my career to be one because often we do. But guess what? The gifts that was given to me was going to be me no matter what. I was going to be doing them no matter what. Now, if y'all haven't picked up on it yet, I have a gift of discernment. <laughs> That's who I am. So no matter where I am, no matter where I'm at, SB is discerning something. It's just a natural thing. I'm asking questions. I'm analyzing. It's just not okay. You Somebody say, um... Where's the book? I'd be like, well, what book are you talking about? You know, and and why why do you, why you want that book? This is me. I'm the analyzer. I'm discernment. This is me. It was a gift. I got it. I picked up on it years ago, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be the judge, y'all. That was my career path. It would just fit. I knew it, and that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, I had a husband. I was working on that, too, but, you know. But then my husband got to talking to me a couple times. We had these conversations because um, I would go to school. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <y> uh. <laughs> I would go to school for a little bit. And then something would happen. I would get out. Of, I would stop going to school. So, you know, I just couldn't get in that little niche for whatever reason. So we had a conversation. But before I tell y'all about the conversation, let me read this $2 super chat from typing. How are you doing today? The career versus family is false feminist uh, doc, doc, dichotomy. You're right. <laughs> but remember now, when I was 25, the feminist movement, it was out there, but I'm a black woman. Wasn't nobody talking feminist movement to me. That ain't what I was about. I was about me. I was self-seeking. I'm just being honest with you. I hope I can be that way. So anyway, going back to the conversation. I've said this so many times because um, I was all about the, I was about the career and the robe and the black, you know, the judge, you know, why you want it? Because it just fit who I was, you know, the gift of discernment and the judging and all that just came natural. <laughs> so my husband and I was like, he was like, babe, why you want to do that? You know, you is it money that you're making? And I thought about it I was like. Mm, no, I ain't never even thought about that. Is the money? Because remember, I was in the real estate business back then and in the real estate business, I made lots of money. So then he was like, but you know, you know, if you do this, you're going to be taking, you're going to be gone away all the time. You're not going to be at home. You're not going to be able to do this. What, what happens to us? And I'm thinking, 
you're doing what you want to do, aren't you? You're an entrepreneur, don't I do it? I help you and stuff. Yeah, you do. But what about if you become this? You know how? Where, where, hmm. I got to thinking about it. I was like, I need to rethink this because this might not be right. You know. I got a little frustrated a couple of times because I couldn't stay on my, you know, my school plan like I wanted to. And it was his fault. My husband that is. I, you know, this is what I want to do. But then I start thinking and I start praying and asking for, you know, guidance and like, what, 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 what? Tell me. And I was like, no, 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 little see, listen. The gift of discernment I gave you, it's yours. You you ain't got to exercise it nowhere. It's in you. No matter where you are, you can be that. And I also got something different for you. I want you to be a wife. Dearly beloved. Y'all, I heard it. I finally heard it. Now that was the second time it was told to me. That was the second time. The second time I heard it. The first time I didn't hear it. I heard it, but I didn't hear it. I am a wife. But the second time, I want you to be a wife. It was deep. And I was like, wow. See, the first time when I heard it, it was like, that's all? All right, I can do that. Because the first time it was more of a physical thing. You know, I'm a nourisher. I cook dinner. I clean the house. You're not going to come and have a dirty house. You Husband's underwear is going to be folded. Socks are going to be put together. Y'all, you just don't know how good the husband has it because I, 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 I learned from a wife. My mom was a wife. So the externals, oh, my God, they came second nature spiritual, mental, the deep stuff that keeps you married for 27 years, the stuff you got to second thing, the stuff that's not self-serving, the stuff that gets you from day one to day, mm -mm, year 27. That stuff I didn't even know I had to work on, but that second time I heard it. And then when I heard it, it start, it start, uh, how can I say, revealing itself to me. Hmm, what is a wife? Hey, well, I mean, I'm already doing all this and all this, but guess what? Now I'm hearing my husband. Yeah, I, I don't know if y'all hear me. Yeah, you won't. You won't be able to because I'm on the camera and I'm talking to you. But I start hearing. I'm, I'm feeling him. The compassion, the empathy, you know, all those things that he went through or his childhood, whatever. Now I'm hearing him. It's making sense to me. Now, I, now I'm getting it. You know, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm saying, hmm. So where we would have arguments, there are no longer arguments because I see him. I'm a wife now. It's becoming, it's just all being revealed. I now understand exactly what he's saying. You know, I'm not just, oh, okay, baby, we'll do this. No, it's now I'm feeling him, the compassion for him, the compassion to what he went, went through. His, the empathy, you know, you know, having been that I'm the second wife, all these things now are happening. It's all being revealed because now I'm becoming a wife. Now the becoming one part of one flesh, it's all just like, oh, I'm seeing, I'm understanding. And it all just gets so easy to me. It's all becoming very easy. And then, then you start thinking about the covenant and the promise and all those things just start coming really easy. And then you get into the, uh, how, well, what kind of wife am I going to be? How am I? You know, what am I doing now? And so now I got the roles of the wife, the roles of the wife, they started to be, you know, revealed to me. Now I got to tell y'all this. There was one book that I refer to all the time outside of the Bible. There's one book that I refer to all the time. It's called The Power of a Praying Wife. I need all of you to get it. I heard somebody say not too long ago that there are not too many different people. Well, let me say this right so y'all understand what I'm saying. There are a lot of people here in this world, man and woman. But as far as personalities, there are not many. So in this book, it goes over the different personalities of men or husbands that you may encounter. You know, my husband's one person, you know, at this time, he may be a different person another time. So all these things are outlined in this book. And it actually, the things and the problems that you're having, you say these particular prayers over that husband and you continue to pray those prayers. And then you see, and you, you see change. Now, all the while you thinking that, oh, this is working. It's changing him. But it's actually you that's changing. It's actually you that I'm going to say just growing up It's you taking accountability is you being a wife. One of the first things that um, I learned is a wife is a role of a wife. It's a few things. I'm, I'm only going to talk about maybe four and we're going to kind of get in them. We don't have to get into them because I, I want you all to I want you all to study this. This is for you all. This is something that you should want. I can't want it for you, although I do. 
I can't want it for you. But the first thing is a wife must be discreet. I hear this all the time. I hear some real loose talking amongst women. And they talking about private parts and, um, you know, they may even go as far as giving details on how they're, they were with their husband. You know, they might tell their girlfriends or they may be in some kind of, you know, con I don't know. Just we need to be discreet, ladies. Now, with this discretion comes vulnerability. Y'all know if your husband, if you're discreet and you're modest and you're, you know, you might smile, but you don't have much to add. You might listen, but you don't, you're not adding much. You're just hearing what somebody says. Then your husband will be vulnerable with you. He will tell you those deepest secrets or those uh, insecurities or whatever it is that keeps you all from becoming one flesh. You will know those things. And then again, you have compassion and you have empathy, and then you'll get over that hurdle. See, then y'all just came a little bit closer, just a little bit. And then, you know, so many things. But if you out here being a loose woman, talking about your private parts, talking about how it was not large enough. And then sometimes I hear women talk about, well, I got to try it before I ride it or try it before I buy it or whatever, that kind of stuff. Y'all, we got to stop that. That is not, that is not something that a wife should do. You cannot discuss your intimate, you're so right, your intimate actions and details with your friends about your man, your mama either. Y'all can't be doing that. Y'all got to be, it's got to be so much discretion. And I, I wouldn't advise, I'm going to tell you too. Now y'all might get mad. Me and y'all shouldn't do it either. Don't do it. Be very discreet. You know, because everybody, so everybody plays around with this marriage thing. Y'all play around with it, you know. It, you know, it's just marriage. It's just a piece of paper and all that. No, 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 no. It's very, it's much deeper than that. And if you, if you took it more serious, then you would understand what I'm saying. Influence is huge. Influence is huge. There has been many men who have heard husbands talk about how good their wives were sexually or how much of an animal, the noises she made and all that. And I promise you, he pushed up on her and you didn't even know. So I'm telling you, protect wives protect your husband protect them protect your union i say that i know you sound crazy y'all and it ain't got nothing to do i'm not saying somebody out there having sex i'm not saying i don't trust my husband i'm talking strictly influence if something looks good if y'all see somebody come on how about this y'all if y'all saw right now on tv somebody licking a i a vanilla ice cream what you call it? a ice cream cone just licking it Y'all see him do it. What's the first thing y'all going to do? I want me some ice cream. I know I do it. I don't know about y'all. I'd be like, damn, I might not do it right away. But guess what? Some way around here, I'm going to get me some vanilla ice cream because that person was on TV and they was just going in and it looked so good. So are you telling me that I could talk about how good my husband is? No, I, and kind of I do, but I don't go in details like that. That somebody wouldn't want one like him or him if they could. See, y'all make me feel like I'm an old woman because I just know so much. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I lived a lot of life because I'm not. I'm not that old woman. But it just seems like when I say things, I surprise people from the angle that I come from. And I'm just being honest. I'm being honest. Influence is real. So we got to be discreet. We have to protect our union, our husbands, and our wives. We got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta tighten it up. The second thing is um, the role of the wife is, um, hmm, it would go hand in hand with the first thing. We have to be sexually faithful. Now, I know y'all probably sitting back saying, oh, that's a, what we always say, double standard. Absolutely. It absolutely is. But so what? We're being wives. We're not being 304s. We're not tricking. He's not our pimp. I'm not looking for the best night. I'm not trying to out here for I'm not doing anything like that. I'm trying to be a wife. I'm a wife. So I do have to be sexually faithful. Right? And so with that, that means it comes a lot of discretion. That means also that means I need to be sincere about who I am and what I'm doing. I need to be for real. I don't need to be playing games. I don't need to be meeting no single men at the Starbucks. I don't need to be entertaining anything that has an appearance or that might even look like it go left because I'm a woman 
And I done told y'all several times. I like a good smelling man. Hmm. So, but let's start right here. Luke Casley, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. Sheba dog squeezing a big red heart. I like that. And you get the money line. So listen, before I go to the next one, the sexually faithful, I mean, I hate that I have to even say that because we all should know better. But if for some reason we think that because we got a cousin or because that man got a wife or because that man is married or something like that, we think that he no longer has an eye for a good looking woman or a big booty. So we'll go to the cookout and we'll be at the cookout just uh, twerking, having a good time. And he just looking. He be moving with you. He don't even know. You don't even know. He look. He be just moving with you. His body be just going. He looking right at your booty. But we have no idea that you are really turning that man on. We just think it's all fun. Actually, you thinking, ah, oh, he married. He ain't paying me no attention though. He looking because you're still a woman. But no, we want to play the game. Oh, he married. His wife taking care. He wouldn't do that. We've been friends forever. I need a man to come and tell y'all about friends forever because I, I don't do it any justice. I need a man, a real man to come and tell y'all about the real thoughts that real men have about real women um, that have been around forever. You know, now I'm not saying that he would ever act on them. And, you know, there are men out there who are very disciplined. I agree. But you just don't know. You don't know. You just don't know. And when you don't know. You just don't play in those. You just don't play around with it. That's all I'm saying. You don't play around with it. So anyway, number two, first, you're going to be discreet. We're not talking intimacy. We're not telling any jokes about, oh, what about the one? What about the wives that go in there and be telling um, jokes with the men? You know, they be, oh, uh-uh, no discretion. We can't do that. When you walk into a room as a wife, you need to be respected. Men need to even change the words that they say. And if you're not getting that, we got to check ourselves later. We got to figure out why does me is still talking about, you know, what's going on with them. And I'm here in this room and acting like I'm not here. I don't know. Let me, you know, let me, I got to be a little bit more modest. They need to notice that a woman is in the room and she's a wife and all this stuff. So, you know, all that comes with that. That's a wife, you know, and of, of course, like I said, the sexual faithfulness. I don't even know why I would have to tell a wife to be faithful, but I'm telling you somebody need to hear it. We got to be faithful. And that goes, it goes far. You know, you know, we would, we would just say it's having sex. I would say it goes far. So I'm gonna let y'all think about that. The other thing, number three, I'm, I got four things I'm gonna share with you. The third thing is the manager of your home. Now I always talk about this cause I love to manage my house. I do. Now in managing my home, I am still submitting to the leadership of my husband. Okay, so get that straight. It ain't it ain't one without the other. It ain't like this is my house. You take care of that out there, and I'm gonna do this in here. Um, no, I'm still submitting to the leadership of my husband, but I'm managing my home. I'm making sure that my home is clean. I'm making sure that my house is a home. I'm making sure my husband comes home. He has a good, peaceful place to come home to. You know, like I said, if I'm, if I'm burning candles or if I'm making some food, there needs to be some kind of smell going on. And that's this is me. I realize that a lot of you have small kids. I don't, you know, my child is grown. Our kids are grown, making, try to do their own thing. So that part wouldn't necessarily apply to you. So you have to figure out how to conduct your own home as far as managing your home. It doesn't, may not look like mine. I'm just telling you, you need to be a manager of the home wife. Wife needs to manage the home. So um, that would be now for me. And some of y'all may not do this because it's different for everybody. But for me, my husband, a long time ago, delegated me to be the person that pays the bills. So I do that. Now, his business makes the money. He pays me, he pays himself, and it all goes in one big old pot, and I pay the bills. Now, everybody ain't going to like that, but that's, that's how it goes over here. I pay the bills. I have a real good little mindset on how I'm supposed to pay bills, and he hates it, but he knows that he's going to have good credit in the end. <laughs> Good credit. So, you know, you all have to decide. You all have to decide on how you're going to manage your home 
under the leadership of your husband. He delegated all this and this is how it is. So this is true. Right now, this is the last one and probably the one that is most important, right? Is that um, the wife should be spiritually minded, right? I hope y'all understand what I mean by that. She needs to be spiritually minded. She needs to have discipline. She needs to have order. She needs to be have morality. She needs to be a good influence over everyone in her house, including her husband. Now, I know y'all probably really tripping about that because you're like, hey, 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 he the leader. Yeah, he's the leader. And he's the one who, did, uh, who gets his information or who is in direct communion with Christ. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. But he's also the one that goes out there in this crazy world. He deals with the women in the short skirts. He deals with the men that are overly aggressive. He deals with the men um, who put them down daily, if y'all understand what I mean. He deals with the, um, he just deals with all the junk that goes on in the world. So when he comes on home, he needs somebody that's going to say, babe, let's take it off. He needs that good influence. He needs that covering at that point in time. Because remember, he's covering all of us. But he needs that covering at that point in time that says, okay, I'm going to speak some life into you because I know they drug you today. You look tired. So this is what we're going to do. So she needs to be somewhat spiritually minded, guys. She needs to be really disciplined. She needs to be modest. She needs to be one second. Thank you, Sir Hale. And you said SB Nation going to the <laughs> Rockets, going to the moon. Thank you so much for your nine dollar ninety nine cents super chat. You I'm gonna run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Money line. I'm gonna run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Yeah. Thank you. And so much. Listen, she needs to be that disciplined woman. She needs to be spiritual minded. She needs to have some, some, some wisdom and some discernment. Now, this might not all come today. It may not come on this good Friday, you know, but that needs to be the, um, the air. I should say the air. That's, she doesn't, in other words, don't be no chaotic woman. You know, don't come in there. Where you been all day? Why are you sitting in the car? Why are you? Uh -uh, no. A wife, we need to be the wife. We need to be the wife, the peaceful woman, the one that brings that nice, gentle air to the environment, the, the influence, the morality. You know, like when, oh, I got to go. What about when your husband say, you know, I met the dude in the parking lot. He wanted to give me four tires for a hundred dollars and the tires, two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars a piece. And he, he might, you know, he might be running by his wife and his wife say, what? Say it again, babe. Yeah, four tires. And um, he gonna give them to me for two hundred dollars, and they really cost two hundred dollars a piece. But he gonna give them to all four. You know that wife need to be one say, babe. Mm -mm, that sound like to me some stolen stuff. We don't invest in that. I, mm -mm. No, no, tell him no, thank you, and, and get a boy fifty dollars and let him go on because that's stealing. He done stole them ties from somebody. No, babe, we don't invest in that. That see that one, that influence, because you know. Everybody want a good deal. Y'all been at the women. We've been at the hair salon and, and the people done came in there done boosted all them clothes and they be like, you want this one? And I'll be like, no, I'm sorry. I can't do it. But some of us take real, we take advantage of them $10. Give me $10. I, you know, you got a hundred dollar shirt that done stole from the Macy's. Oh, let me do one better. From the Nordstrom's. And they telling you to give them $20 and you're going to do it because we ain't even thought nothing about it. We got, But see, listen, we got to, Listen, it's all about where you are. We don't get it all together in one day, but we got to grow to getting it together. <laughs> we can't just stay stuck in our dysfunction and our trifleness. How about that? So anyway, she got to be about love, the love, you know, to the patients, the peaceful woman. You know, she got she can't be the self-seeking woman. She got to be the one that <laughs> buy them tires. <laughs> You see what I mean? Remarkable for real. So I'm buying them tires. Listen, you ain't the only one that bought them tires. Brother, a lot of people bought them tires, but I'm telling you, it's an influence, it's, it's morals. That wife, that wife would be the one that'd be like, babe, you can't buy them tires. That ain't right. He done stole them tires from somebody. It's got to be somebody that says this to you. If not, we'll stay in our junk <laughs> forever. Um, she got to be of godly behavior, y'all. She got to be, you know, and I know, I know y'all. Well, who, I can, I can see the heads rolling now. I can see it. 
but it's okay. I'm just telling you what got me from day one to year 27. And, and, and I, this is, this is who I am. So when I, when you do this and you operate in the role of a wife and I gave y'all four examples of the role and y'all know it's many others, we can get into, we can get deep into it. And I want y'all to add to it too. Um, when you operate like that, God will bless you. He will bless you. He'll bless you with all those things you need. Those four tires. He'll make sure you get them. Make, actually, let me tell you something. He'll make sure you have enough money to get them. And I promise you, you will feel good knowing you can afford them. Then the fact that you went and stole, that you purchased some stolen goods from somebody else. Yes. So Lou, how are you? He says, Lou says, that sounds like someone else's car got left home. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Somebody's did. Dad or either went to the discount tire when the door was open and slid it out. Because you know them inside jobs. People be doing a whole lot of stuff. I'm telling you, that wife, she needs to be the one be like, babe, no, no, come on. Let's go. You know, that's what I'm telling you. So um, I hope y'all heard all of those things. And I'm talking to the wives. I mean, the women. I'm talking to the wives who are now here. And I'm talking to the women who want to be wives because all of this is actually um, becoming one flesh with the man that you decide to marry. And the reason why I say now and now times we don't know women don't know that it's that, that they need to be married. It's because there's so many distractions and so much junk around you. It's actually telling you that you pre you better off being single. But I'm telling you, you're not. This world is horrible. The things that we have to subject ourselves to is horrible. Even when you're dating, trying to find a good man, you know, it's horrible. You know, should you, you know, you always know, you know, now anyway, as if you're an adult, you know, when you're younger, I'm giving you a pass because you learn, you live and you learn. But now that you're an older person, even thinking about having sex with somebody is horrible. Even though, even if you think he's a good guy, it's horrible. It's a horrible thought, you know, in all these transmitted diseases that we have to think about. All the um, economy, the inflation, the, the rents, uh, buying a house, uh, the job I should work, the career I should, all of this stuff is horrible to me. When you have a husband or a covering, my husband protects me so much from the stuff that goes in the world. I actually do feel a little sheltered. So when I'm hearing some stuff that I hear, I'm actually really like taken back a little bit, but I'm glad though. I don't want to know about all this junk. And I hate that women need and have to know about all this junk. I want them to be able to be protected. I want them to be able to be discreet and have good love with their husband. I want them to be faithful to one man because you don't have to worry about all that junk. Y'all, when you faithful to one man, you ain't got to worry about who the baby daddy is. Think about it. No, Dearly it's, beloved. it's so much wisdom that comes with this god can't help but to bless you <laughs> because you're doing the work you're doing the work you're doing the work you're the example of why he created you for the man remember one man took and taken you did i say took and forgive me taken from the rib of a man you're going back to your natural purpose why do we fight this why would we fight it i'm not fighting it i didn't fight it now did i have any tricks or did how did i know I don't know how I knew it was just a natural. It was natural. I naturally evolved into being a wife. I knew I needed to be married. It was just something natural. But now I have no idea. I see and I hear all of the, the distractions. And I'm just telling you guys, that's all they are. It's just a sin problem, a nature of sin, keeping you away from your natural purpose. So the natural, so the one question that I said in the beginning that I asked myself, um, uh, was my purpose to be a wife? Was that my only purpose? That was my purpose when I decided to say I do. It was <laughs> and I have laid out to you four things or four roles of a wife. And if you agree or don't agree, hmm. But it is now, as far as my career and my gifts of who I am, that I just show up naturally this way, no one can take them away from me. And I'm that person too. So not me and Mary didn't take my individuality away. It just made me better. So Gretchen, how are you? Well, I'm outside catching a bus. <laughs> uh oh, so listen, I gotta ask you a couple of questions, but I wanna hear what you have to say first. What you got? Oh no! I'm just sitting there listening to a wise woman like you. Thank you. Get all the get all the information I can get. 
before okay. I jumped the room. Gretchen, you have gone on a date since the last time I talked to you, haven't you? Well, actually, he's um, he's busy doing his photography right now. Oh, okay. But we did, they, they did, they did spoke to me, text okay. me, and face Facebook me, not Facebook me, but Facetime me. Okay. Because he misses me. Oh, so how did it go? It went awesome. <laughs> Stay in there, Gretchen. Stay in there. <laughs> you looking mighty fly over there at the bus stop. I hope ain't nobody you look. Make sure make sure you paying attention. I don't want nobody to sneak up on you now. No, I'm under the shelter of that bus stop. I'm under the shelter. Okay. Well, it's definitely good to hear that. Listen, keep 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 the conversations going with the man. And one day hopefully y'all get to go on a date. Okay. <laughs> hopefully. So all right. Did, did you have any questions, though, before I let you go? I think we're going to. I don't know if we have anybody else. But listen, guys, I haven't said it yet, but the link is in the chat. If y'all have something you want to add, ladies, I would love for you to come up and let's just have a quick conversation, a little word or two, add something to it, take something away from it, ask a question, whatever you want to do. I would love for you to do that. But um, I just lost my train of thought. Gretchen, so what, what do you think about what I have to say? Is there any part of that that you've heard before? Do you believe what I'm saying? Is it helpful? Yes, it is helpful. Well, <clears throat> let me tell you what I was raised by. Okay, I raised by a two parent home. I lost my fa I lost my father in two thousand nineteen to cancer, unfortunately. But his words I held on. He told me that a good man look. He told me what a good man loves, look what a woman does for him, and asked to cook, so I cook. <laughs> <laughs> That is he a always, of it. Yeah, that he is told, of it. yeah, he told me how to how to use the washing washing machine, how to use the dishwashing machine properly, how to load it up properly. I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> and since things were not the same without him with me, so I'm just every day I miss him, but I know he's with me every time. So when what? I so when I go out or when I go go about my business, I see some guys. Randomly trying to call me out, I was like, "No thanks, I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> I know what you, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're trying to get me, but no, I know all the tricks in the trade because my dad taught me." Good, good, good. That's good. See, listen, you had a good example. Let me, let me say this though. But listen, guys, I am in the midst of a huge thunderstorm. So if I should lose you guys, I, this is why. But we're gonna continue to talk until we do. But okay. <laughs> I won't lose. Hopefully it'll just continue to rain and we'll be good. But, you know, I'm just telling you. I don't know. It's getting pretty hard out there. But either way. But listen. Uh, we, got, we got heavy rain over here in Houston. So Okay. You in Houston? We're, gonna, we're, about, we're about to have one next week. Okay. Okay. All okay. week. <laughs> oh, wow. So listen, Gretchen. Um, Listen, I thank you so much for watching. Make sure. I want you to definitely go on that date. I want to hear about it. So you got to come back and let us know exactly what happened. And um, okay. I, I can't wait to hear it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming up. And we'll we'll see. And this is my first time actually getting to talk to you. We're going to have to talk to We're going to have to talk to each other while you in the street. Is that what's got to happen? <laughs> well, anything why was an excellent Wi-Fi is good. <laughs> I'll got you. Got you. Got you. All right. All right. It's good talking to you. And we'll see you soon. Thank okay. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> wow, that was good. So listen, guys. Um, so uh, what I was what I was saying. So anyway, any ladies that are that are in the the, the live or in the chat here that have any questions, or you know, men too, because I was oh, but my question initially, I said this. Um, I never did get the chance to ask my husband today uh, what role, if any, did he feel like he played in it or did, was he of any help? I don't remember y'all. These are things that I've gone through. I remember the initial conversation um, that he and I had about uh, the money, you know, being a judge and why, but beyond that, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember us having any or him saying too much of anything else pertaining to me becoming a wife. I just think he probably just was on the receiving end. <laughs> <laughs> and life probably got easier and you know for him and things just made sense start making sense to him and, and that's that was the route that we took so ladies if you're asking yourself about the individuality and the career again you do not lose who you are 
you just become a wife. Then this is if you're accepting marriage. This is, you know, and, I, you know, another question, too, is what about the women who are not married or who don't want to be married? You all would have a separate purpose. And I need for you all to figure that out. But for the woman who said yes, for the woman who became the wife, I'm going back to my original purpose. And that was to be the help meet for the husband or the man whom I came from. And it, it sounds so simple now, guys, because I'm on the other side of it. But when you live in this life and, and, and I hope y'all can understand when you live in this life, it's like, dang, what's happening today? You know, you want what you want. And sometimes it does not, it doesn't equate. It doesn't make any sense. I don't want to do that. But we have no idea that life is easier once you do it. You know, we have this thing, my husband and I, he said, because it's always like the chicken and the egg. I mean, we always say, what comes first? Does the man open the door first or do I wear a dress first? And that's the magical question. What is first? And we have not yet came up with an answer to that. We have not came with an answer because it just keeps going round and round and round. But if we are in our roles, this question doesn't have to be asked because he's opening the doors and I'm wearing a dress. So it's not what happens first. It's just this is what's happening. So this is what I'm telling everybody to do. Lady Nava, hello. Hey, auntie, happy Friday. I see you have the braids for the summertime weather. Sorry, I'm late, been busy. Listen, you don't have to say you're sorry. Thank you so much for your support. And you are right, it's 100 degrees outside and whatever we can do <laughs> to keep it going. So you're exactly right. So um, if there was anyone, y'all know, listen, y'all already know if I don't have any interactions for come it is when I uh I love your box braids thank you so much sugar curls how come when it comes when I'm talking to the women y'all do not want to come up here and join me it's just me and y'all but when I'm talking to the men they be everywhere <laughs> they like to come and communicate their thoughts but the ladies they be like hmm let me see how what I think about and red lipstick vibes if you're not busy, I would love for you to come up because you're getting ready to take a big step really soon. And I want to hear you. I want to hear what you're scared about. I know you're scared a little bit. I know your knees shaking just a little. But anyway, so I want to say something else, though. I'm, 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 I've, I am I'm, did that and I hope everybody is good with it. I hope everybody um, understands the, the role of a wife. And the question, though, is does a good man fulfill a woman's purpose? That goes back to the chicken and egg. That goes back to the door being open. So the man, this is a good man. A good man fulfills a, a woman's purpose. The good man is the man that asked me to marry him. He's the good man that opens the door. A, a man that recognizes he has a good thing, a wife. He's the man that opens the door. He opened the door, right? I'm walking in. I have on the dress. So, yes, a good man can fulfill it because guess what? It is not about the man. The purpose for the woman was to go back to the man because that's where I came from. So I hope y'all got that. Malcolm JC, thank you so much for your $19.99 super chat for the ice cream fund. Listen, I don't know if you were here earlier, but have y'all seen that commercial where they be the little kid doing the vanilla cone? I'm telling y'all, it makes me, I've been thinking about this ice cream for like four days. I haven't gotten it yet, but I've been like, think, and I don't even eat vanilla ice cream, but I've been like, I gotta get me some ice cream. I gotta get me some ice cream. So that goes back to influence. But guess what, Malcolm? You get the money line. Money line. I'm gonna run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Money line. I'm gonna run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. So Lou says women, women be hiding. Lou, they not hiding. They just reserved. Let's, let's, let's change our words. Let's put some energy behind our words. Some, some positivity and positive energy behind our words. Not hiding. Just reserved. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm home. I home make. Oh, you do that. Oh, I used to do that when we were little, Mel. We used to make ice cream. Sure did. Okay, but listen, I want to get back to something else. Because, um. Often I visit panels, right? So we kind of switching gears. All commercials are part of subliminal thinking, subliminal thinking. You are exactly right. But guess what else, Luke Aisley? This world we're living in, the people we hang out, they're subliminal too. Their influences, <laughs> they make us do crazy stuff also if we hang out with them long enough. And if they say enough things, uh, say the right things, 
they'll influence us also. So you're exactly right. But that ice cream got me going. But um, what I was saying is that uh, I've been visiting here and there some panels. And uh, I think you guys were inviting me to your panels and all of that. I actually got one. Let me, let me tell you about this this week. This week coming up, I have, I'm going to be on a panel, panel, not a panel, Family Values and myself are doing a show on Wednesday night, the 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And I will make sure I verify that time. But next Wednesday, Family Values and myself, we have a show um, and I want you all to tune in. But I'm going to let you know more about that uh, before the show actually comes. Um, Aaron, thank you so much for your ten dollar super chat. Did you ever do that challenge? Aaron, I have begun the challenge. I had to get a clearance for the challenge because, see, I'm an older woman. I can't just be doing all these death drops and this crazy stuff that you be doing. <laughs> I have to I have to circumvent and figure out what I can do. But I have been doing the challenge to where I can do it. Remember, I told you I was going to be doing half of what you was doing anyway. But how about you? Have you been doing it? Thank you so much for your $10 super chat. You get the money line. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Oh, Family Values, hey, how are you doing? Listen, if you're not busy, cam up for a few minutes so everybody can know who you are. You don't have to stay long. Just say hello so they can know that you and I are the individuals that are going to be doing the show next Wednesday. And I want people to know who you are, definitely. So um, anyway, been visiting panels. Um, black man, I did not get to stay. Well, I was on a black uh, panel with Black man, Family Values. Oh, uh, gosh. High Value Wife. Um, oh, y'all. TJ Randolph, Queen Smiley. Y'all don't get mad at me if I forgot. Please don't uh, shoot. <laughs> a lot of ladies. Let's put it like that. And they were having, we were having very good conversation. I had to duck out though, because my time is short late at night. But anyway, um, we were having very good conversations. And one of the things that keeps coming up in these spaces is of course um relationships and i mean when i say relationships i mean outside relationships like with your girlfriends or you know men friends or things of that nature so um i want to touch on that just a little bit because i think that that you all are maybe getting some people are getting maybe the wrong impression a little bit now wait a minute let me make sure let me keep, keep your thought press straight thought process straight it is what it is married women typically well no this married woman does not do girlfriends single girlfriends i do not go on trips i don't do hot girl summers i don't have the need to get away from my husband coach k thank you thank you coach k um who else was? anyway thank you riding the six um i don't do that okay and the reason why i don't do that is because i've lived enough life where i now know that there are influences in this world there are temptations in this world. And I just like my husband. And I hope that makes sense. Even though we've been together a very long time, I like him. We have Cannon. Oh, thank you, Cannon and Jenny. Jump. Jenny was very good. And Cannon was too. Jenny, she um she left. I think she left when I did. We didn't I didn't really get to hear from her, but she she made a good point. She made the point about protecting your husband when you the wife, you get married. You don't have to testify against him. I really like that. <laughs> I really like that. Because so often women will sell their husbands out. But me, I ain't saying a word. Remember, I told y'all, y'all have to prove to me that my man is a serial killer. You know, Dearly the beloved. woman might be laying dead right there. And I'd be like, he ain't do that. Uh-uh. Nope. <laughs> so I like that. She was. That was good. Thank you, BB. B. Um, so anyway, I want y'all to understand. It's not, there is no dislike. I said, TJ, there's no dislike for single women. I have absolutely no dislike for single women. I absolutely love single women. When I say love, I mean, I care about them. Um, I would, I, I want to be protective of them. I actually want them to be married just to keep it all the way straight. Hey, you know, I want them to be married. Any single woman, I want them to be married because I want them to have the protections um, of a husband and being married and not have to worry about so many things that are going on in the world. This is so true. I was there. I was them. 
that life of me stopped at 25. I was blessed to have it stop at 25. But to live any life after that beyond 25, I bet is very difficult. So I love the single women. So I don't dislike them in any way. But understand, we think differently. <laughs> I just gave, I just went over four things, four roles of a married woman. And those four roles of a married woman, a single woman is not thinking about that at all. Must be discreet. No, she ain't being discreet. She the one that's sending the D pics. Y'all know she she talking about the intimacy. The one talking about she got the uh she got to try it before she buy it. That's what a single woman does. A married woman doesn't do that. Now, single girls, I'm not mad at you at all, but I want to get you married because you are so much more. You're so much more than that. I you, you can't see it right now because you're who you are. I get it. But I'm just saying I can't allow you to influence anything that I do. And what would happen is the married woman would always be the one that's that, that's viewed as the one with the more, more more sense. You know, she's more sensible. Let me tell her what this man did or let me um, share with her what happened last night. You know, she would be that person. She would be. That's who she would be. So let me see this uh, modern Renaissance man. Hey, how are you? Uh, hey, hey there, sis. I see you got rid of the Holly Bear. <laughs> we will collab soon. You are doing a great job. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. <laughs> so, um, again, though, no, she would be the one that would be coming to you. I I'm gonna give my example. She would be like, okay, let's be married. She, I know she's gonna know what to do. So that's what the single women do. They'll come to you. You, you the married one. They'll come to you and want to talk to you about what's going on in their life. Uh, what you think? He said this. He was acting like he wanted to be with me for life and asking me these questions. What you think? It would be so innocent on their end. It would be so innocent. Guys, I'm not telling you that single women are bad people. And I want y'all to understand that. They're not bad people. They're just not married women. And see, I'm the person that takes my role as being a wife so sincere and so deep that I cannot expose myself in that way. Because I came out of it. I came out of it. I'm telling you, y'all. I just told y'all how it looked. I came out of it and I have no desire to go back because I know now where I'm most protected. I know this. And, and this is not a perfect situation. You know, I'm not telling you that my husband is Jesus. Jesus is gone. He, he took the sins on of all of us and all the things we did on the cross. There's no man like that. So when we be saying things like, oh, I'll respect the man, you know, if he ain't sleeping around. That's not the way it goes. That's not how it goes. We're going to respect people, period. You know, we're going to hope and pray that he doesn't sleep around. We don't want him doing that. But his level, his 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 barometer or his standard shouldn't be per, per, um, perfection because he can't he can't do it. And women, we cannot pretend that we're perfect because we be pretending that we're perfect. We be acting like we ain't, we ain't never doing that. We be acting like a man can't tempt us. We be acting like... Um, we ain't never seen a you so know penis. We be acting like that, y'all. That's not that's not right. So my whole point about that, first and foremost, is single women. I want to let you know I love you all. I want the best for you all, and I feel like I know what it is. You know, you ain't mine. No, I shouldn't be pushing myself up on you and my thoughts of your life. Maybe I shouldn't, but I'm just sharing with you. I want to be the examples that we didn't get. The examples that we did not have, I want to be that. Hey, Bella, how are you? Mr. Carson, how you doing? How's it going? What's going on? Nothing much. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Good. Uh, good. What you Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, I won't be long. I got to uh, go into work soon. But um, what's the topic? You said, um, does a good man fulfill a woman's purpose? Yes. Honestly, I want to say yes, but I feel like it's a trick question. Is that trick? <laughs> Kinda, but no, but yeah, it is. It is. It's a trick question, but but maybe not. The the reason why we asked the question this way because um a woman was built from a man. So our purpose is for you all. So do you feel like that's a trick? No. I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. 
I said I think a good man does fulfill a woman's purpose. Yeah. Yeah, because see, our purpose, our purpose is our purpose is for the man. And if he's good, that's a plus because we were built from you. We were made from you for you to be your helpmate. So it is you can because, you know, so often I'm sure you've heard it before that women, we always looking for our individuality. We want our own careers. We want to be our own people. And we just don't see we don't see the need of being married. And there is a need to be married. And I'm trying to get across to women, single women, the need for being married. And I realize that not not many people understand that looking from the outside. Um, our purposes be becomes aligned with our husband. Well, yeah, because your purpose is to be his wife. It definitely aligns. But you know what? You got to be operating and trying always to get to that one flesh. Brittany B, how are you doing? No man can fulfill my purpose because he is the one that gives me purpose. Hmm, your purpose. Let me say that. Let me, let me read that again. Make sure I say no man can fulfill my purpose because he is the one that gives me purpose. No, the man didn't give you purpose. God gave you the purpose for being his wife and you came from him. So he brings you back to the man. Does that make sense? <laughs> and we may be saying the same thing, but I don't know. The purpose is to sign the prenup first. Mr. Rucker, how are you doing? Did you sign? Have you gotten a you know what? You've been signing a prenup for a very long time now. Are you married? I hope so. You should be married by now. <laughs> Brittany B, if you're not at work, maybe you can come and explain that to me a little bit more. But remember, the purpose for a woman from the creator was to be a man's helpmate. He made us from the man. He took us out, made us. Now we're going back to the man in marriage, in marriage, in marriage. So now we're his wife. So now we're becoming one flesh. So that's our purpose. So I hope I'm saying that correctly. So I won't confuse anybody, including myself. Facts and Auntie SB, you still owe uh, Sir, Hale, Sir Hale another money. I do. We missed it. I'm going to give you one anyway. Money line. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Yeah. Thank you for that. Y'all got to help us sometime. Y'all know where we be at. But anyway, um, but uh, Brittany, Brittany B, I hope I um, said that correctly. Sometimes I have to speak very slow. The Bloomin' Ebony, how are you doing today? And thank you for being here. But anyway, um, so the title wasn't, it is kind of funny, but it is, it makes sense. Thank you so very much. And I'm so glad that you're here. I love it when women like you, young girls, you, Brittany, y'all wanting to be married. And I just wish I had this, guys. But you know what? Even though I didn't, um, I got married at 25. So I was saved very early. So I still thank the Lord for that because the way and the time that we're living in now, I, I can't say it no more, y'all. It's, it's, I hate that you all are single. I hate that y'all are single. And have to be out here in this. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But anyway, so um, I was going to get back to what I was saying. But the most important thing I wanted to say to everybody, single women, is um, well, let me read this comment. Eugene C says sometimes there are women who may not understand their purpose. Those are the ones who do not realize the power of femininity. Okay. Now remember, though, I'm talking to a purpose for a married woman is to be a wife. If a woman is not married, then she would have to get to the creator and figure out, she would have to have those moments where she needs to figure out who she is. Now, this is the part that we need to talk about, y'all. Hey, real. Did I just see that real? Yes, um, real. This is the part we have to talk about. If a person does not get married, what is her purpose? And also, we often just continually tie our purpose into our careers. Now, like I said, I was fortunate because I had I had certain gifts and I, I knew those things. It was revealed to me what those gifts was early on. So for me to tie my purpose into it and want to do that was quite easy for me. And I think it comes easy for some. But there are some people. It's not easy. It's not easy, y'all. I knew I had to discern. And I knew that being a lawyer and being a judge and being objective, being this person was who I am. I mean, I listen to everything. You know, I listen to it all. I mean, you can come tell me. I, I may know something. And I'll be like, oh, okay. You know, it doesn't matter to me. 
but I will listen and I will take and ask questions and just want to hear what you have to say, because that's who I am. And that is who I am, no matter what I'm doing, even right here in this YouTube space. That's who I am. So I'm going to be that person. So I'm going to be that. But that shouldn't supersede my purpose as a wife. And that's where we have these problems because the feminist movement would tell you, you need to have a career, which we tie directly into our purpose. Mike Machette, let's see. Hey boss lady, I first saw you on a podcast going back and forth with Angry Man, absolutely. I like the way you handled that situation. <laughs> Listen, Angry Man and I were not going back and forth. We just have a difference in opinion. And I don't even think we had a difference in opinion. I actually asked him, what are we arguing about? But thank you so much for being here. And if you have not yet um, subscribed to the channel, make sure you do, because over here we subscribe to the positive and I appreciate you so much. But um, what else I was saying? Luke Kesley 20 joined. Hey. Brittany B joined. Okay, so Luke Kesley, how are you? How are you doing today? Good, can you hear me okay? I hear you perfectly. Yes, thank you. This is a really, really good um, topic. And I just wanted to, hi, Brittany B. Hey, Brittany. Hi, Luke. Hi. I just wanted to touch on the point that you made about being discreet when discussing your intimate um, mm. yes. life. Yes. And I think that also goes back to being modest about the way you dress as a wife. I have seen some wives dress like they're going to a club and like they have no no one to um to let them know that you're disrespecting the husband uh, you know there's this thing called i i heard this quote saying dress the way you want other women to dress around your husband mm. so you know it, it's kind of being discreet about the way you project yourself just because you need to be protected even when you're not around your husband your husband is the one that offers your protection but the modesty part is because you want to be protected from other people around you so and that goes about you know goes back to di being discreet about just being a little more um cautious about how you present yourself in the public right so I want to add to that because I want to say to you, um, you know, the marriage comes first and then the wife, the externals of the wife is normally what comes natural as far as the nourishing, the cooking, the cleaning and what have you. What you're talking about, the discretion, um, that's a that's a part of a mental thing. That's that's becoming one with your husband. That's now understanding what he wants and his value, the respect of him and why we should and should not do certain things. Um, that takes some time sometimes especially if you don't have a good example. But that is also where a lot of people live and where they mess up because, you know, automatically you think, oh, she's a wife. Uh, she's not going to do this or this won't happen to her or that can't happen to them. And in that area is exactly where it happens. That's where that's the area of where temptation can sneak in. Um, that's where uh, if you have in these intimate thoughts, that's where uh, your mind may wonder. That's the area right there, that 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 discretion when you don't have it or when you're discussing things with people that you should not be discussing. You know, you tell them about your husband um, or you just just doing way what we're going to call it like just doing too much. That's that area. Discretion is where it, that's the beginning. So it's best that we try to always teach or demonstrate discretion. Because with that, the rest of it, I think, actually comes because it starts to make sense to you. Because, you know, when you start asking yourself, because the first thing we do, you just you gave an example of the way she was dressed. Her husband don't like it automatically. So he's going to say, don't do it. The first thing she's going to say is you're controlling me. You know, first thing you're controlling me. So then once she continues to become one with him, then she understands the compassion and the empathy and then the way men think. And then all that other stuff starts to be revealed and it should just correct itself. But we definitely need direction in that area. So I, I, I love the way you brought that point up because I didn't I was more so on the intimacy part because uh, the influences is what's so sneaky. Um, the clothing is more like in your face. But we really, really need to pay real close attention to the influences. I think we just are kidding ourselves when we think that we don't influence each other. That's a big deal, big deal. Now, did you have any other questions? Do you need to go or? 
No, I think I think that was the the one part that really stuck with me, and um, and I have seen in social media some of these women talk about just some of the things that they do in their private lives. That is just I can't believe they are talking like that and showing to the world. It's just I don't know. Maybe we've we've lost that concept of just being, you know, private. Privacy is no longer. Um, honored or uh, respected. I don't know. But yeah, that's that's the only part I wanted just to, to touch on. Well, you're welcome to stay. I'm going to speak to Brittany for a little bit, but if okay. you have, it's okay. Hey, Miss sure. Brittany. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, Security Boss. How you doing? I'm doing good. I want to compliment you. You have a, those pictures you took are outstanding. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Definitely. Um, how, how are you going to add to this conversation, ma'am? Um, well, I heard you call my name and so I'm off. So I like to come up when you, um, call my name. Um, just a, just hi, Lou Casey. I never get to say hi to you, but hi. Um, just to piggyback on what she said, just on this topic, if you want to ask me something else, security boss, I'm open for anything, but being a person that's on multiple panels, there's just certain things that I just won't say. And there's certain conversations I won't engage in, you know, or I'll handle them differently. I'll, I'll sway the conversation um, a certain way because I am a woman who wants to be married. I don't care who, what, what the, you know, what it is, who might see it, whatever, um, or how I'm feeling or whatever. It's just, I always want to keep that narrative for me, no matter what the conversation, no matter what. I know how to be aware of my surroundings, be aware of the conversation and know how to guide the conversation where I can give you an answer, but it ain't going to be, you know, it's going to be one where I, <laughs> if it's something that I only want my future husband to know, then that's who's going to know it. And so I, I agree. There are some things that you might not be, you know, you might not want to say on a panel and that's okay. Other people can do what they do. I just don't do that. Right. And I mean, if you want to be smart too, you're thinking who's watching this? Could my possible future husband be watching this? And, you know, you might shut him down just because he sees that you you tell everything about your relationship. You just want to be careful about the information that you share with the world. No, people do not want to, they don't want to know everything about you. They don't. They don't need to know everything about you. No, they shouldn't know anything that you would possibly want just your husband to know. So, and, and if you think deeper about it, if you're willing to share that on a panel, then what else are you willing to share? So you just have to think bigger about what you are willing to say. Right. And you know, they're getting, they're getting real uh, explicit now. Very, because very. Because I want to be real. And it's cool to be real. I'll just be, you know, quiet in the background. I mean, I, people, and that's the thing, security boss, when I say they want to be real, they just want to, you know, they want to be like, oh, I'm a I'm going to say whatever. Well, you can't, some stuff you can't do, but they don't know that yet. And they have to grow into that. But by the time they figure that out, it's too late. Like well, I look back at some of my old videos and I'm like, oh, Brittany, you were so aggressive on the panel. But, you know, I had to grow out of it. And so I have to live with that uh, image of me, you know, that that's out there. Well, that may be. OK, so guess what? You kind of said that then this might be a good thing. So now you know what you won't do. If you never saw yourself doing it, then you won't. So maybe it's for that purpose. But if a woman is trying to be a wife and, you know, a wife in that purpose of a wife, I'm not talking about just being married. I'm talking about being fulfilled. Excuse me, y'all. I'm talking about being fulfilled in the purpose of a wife because that is a big thing. Have y'all ever thought about that? It took me a moment years and years ago because I was like, look, I, it's so much more to me than that. <laughs> I can do that in this too. So, I, you know, I just didn't get it. And I just know that women don't get it. I know that they don't because it's not an example. Nobody sits you down and tell you this is a spiritual thing. You're becoming one with another person. You got to manage the house, this, 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 and this. And this is how it looks. You, you are very purposeful. You're actually like the keeper of such, you know, nobody tells you that. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah. When you Say understand it's not about you no more. You have to put yourself second. It's not. It's not. But but guess what? You find fulfillment in it, though. You find fulfillment in it. Whereas you we do. thought I was going to find fulfillment in that black robe, though. 
you know. I wanted the oh. black folk. I did. I did, y'all. I mean, so I understand how women feel. I really do. I hope they understand. I hope they know that I get it. I get that women want to have their careers. They want to fly to the moon or they want to be in the STEM. I know I get it. And they want to make six figures or what have you. Um, I get it. So let's do this super chat really quick. Let me, I'm, I hope I don't mess this up. Chef Chapino, thank you so much for your $20 super chat. My first, but definitely not last super chat. Oh, on this platform. Thank you to this platform. Thank you so much. You get the money line. Oh, I can see y'all dance. There you go. There you go. Money line. I'm a running every time. Give me mine. Going up, me no decline. Money line right there, boy. <laughs> Don't you just like the explosion? Don't it be like, ooh? Every time I hear it, I be like, ooh. <laughs> and I know it's me? coming, but I'm still like, ooh. Security huh? boss, did you hear me? That was a real classy money line right there. Yeah, listen, y'all did it right. <laughs> listen, y'all kept it right there in the middle. <laughs> but listen, I think it's so important because you know I'm the one. I'm one of the ones that believe in the nuclear family. And I know y'all think and believe that, and even sometimes I get discouraged about it, that we are just going completely off the, we done fell off the mountain. I feel that way. But I think that there are some that are really going to get it. And there are some that are really going to benefit from it. And I think I want to be that person because I am, I have been married 27 years. You know, it don't seem like it, y'all. It just really don't. But when I get to thinking about all the things that my husband and I have done, and all the little stories and, you know, I get to really thinking about it. I'd be like, wow, it has been a long time, you know. So Lady I did not definitely want to share because I also hear all the stuff that you all go through. And I'd be like, dang, I feel like I was saved. Well, go through if we go through it, security boss. You got to remember that. No, I'm just saying living. I'm just living as a single woman. Okay. Just living, even you having to work. When I first met you, you were a, if I can say this, a workaholic. Oh, yes, I sure was. <laughs> I don't want Brittany to be a workaholic. What is, what are you doing working? I don't want you to be a workaholic. Security boss, I sure was. <laughs> I know. I used to be like, I was like, when you get off? You was like, I got to work 12 hours a day. I was like, oh, okay. okay. Say what? Yeah, 15? 16. 16. Oh, yeah, we did. Say, I did 16 on a regular. Yeah. That's what I remember about you. And I'm thinking... This girl is working 16 hours a day. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, why is she working 16 hours a day? I just thought that that was like crazy. I mean, I knew that you were single woman, you were by yourself, but I'm still asking myself, why does she feel like she need to do this? Why, what is it? So I feel like women need to stay busy. I feel like, yeah, idle minds and yeah. So I think it was good for me. So, you know, that's why when a wife, when you become a wife and you have a husband, you put her to work. You better. You better have something to do. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I don't know. Work for yourself. I'm because, saying put her to work. Meaning yeah. Do something. Mm -hmm. Definitely well, true. Well, you can, you can um, work at your home, managing your home, caring for the kids. I mean, having a full-time homemaking job is not easy. If you, you know, if you have a schedule, if you have, you know, even if you're thinking about homeschooling your kids, you know, your life is pretty full if you're planning on managing your house the way um, housewives managed it, managed homes in 1965. Yeah. Um, so that's that would be part of what you talk about with your with your husband. How are you going to take care of the home tasks, and is he going to be working full time? Are you going to be the full-time homemaker, those are things that you're going to have to negotiate before you get into a marriage. So what do y'all think about this? Um, Cause I, I say this often, Lucas Lee, you will be a good example of this. My, um, my husband, you know, as far as managing the home, I love managing my home. But one of the things that um, my husband did delegate to me was paying the bills. What do y'all think about that? That's fine. If it works for you, that's what matters. Yeah. That's all that matters. A lot of times we um, we get a lot of pushback about that um, because, you know, men, Brittany, your camera has gone crazy over there on you, I think. 
Uh, yeah, it's a little weird. There? Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm in DC right now. So I don't have any wife. Let me. Okay. Okay. So we're get... still doing something crazy. Okay. That's fine. No, yeah, you okay now? It just was freezing a little bit, and then now you seem like you're okay. We get a little pushback because, you know, so often um, when, you know, have when you say that a man is a leader or a head of household, you kind of give the impression that they're doing everything. And it is, it's not like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I want women to know it is not like that because it's such a, you know, marriage is getting such a negative uh, review that I need to let women know that we have such a bigger role than it's being than it's being portrayed or, or pictured. My role in, in, in our marriage is huge. Um, and I, I just went over a few things that I do in a, uh, as being a wife and, you know, of the duties that I do. But it's just so, it's so needed because that was why we were created. This is in our purpose. But nobody ever talks about it. It's always something different. So, yeah, in the way, so that, yeah, in the way you say, you know, a man is the leader. He's still the leader. He, no. He's the CEO. You're the CFO doing the finances. So, I mean... However, it works for the relationship. I think it's fine. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that there are some that that say that the man has to always be the one with the money. And, you know, if it works for them like that, that's great. My husband is the one that manages the money, because if I managed it, we would be in shambles. It would be awful. I'm not good managing money, but I manage the house. I manage everything else. But he's the one with the money. Because you know what? I, I'm okay when he does that because I know that we are going to be okay if he does it. Right. The other way around, it would be terrible. So we have a young man right here. He says, yeah. security boss, he says, too many people keep giving mixed info about marriage roles. Yeah. Hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to get, go ahead, Brittany. I was going to say that's where my comment comes in at when I said that the man gives you your purpose. So the role you would play in your marriage with your husband is determined by you all and the leader and what he, that's. Yeah, you're breaking up. Uh-oh, sorry. Oh. I wanna hear what you said though, Brittany. See, say, try it again. Can you, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna. I, what I said was this is where this is where my comment comes in at. Where I said the the husband gives you a purpose because what you do as a wife and what you guys do in your household is set by the man and what you guys discuss as a couple. And so there's no real like rule on what a marriage looks like, but there's a a guideline. So when it comes to roles, I may be a wife that works and you may be a wife that doesn't. But whatever you contribute is what your husband set for you all. And what I do is what my husband set for us. But the, the role is still me assisting my husband and my family and doing what's necessary to support him and our family. That's, Absolutely. that's what I that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sorry. I thought I had good Wi-Fi. <laughs> no, you're exactly right. In a but in with that too, there is a wife. It is still the uh, purpose of a wife and the, what she should do within her marriage, on top of adapting to what her husband needs for her to do. And that's the that's the faithfulness and the discretion and managing of the home. All everything we just mentioned comes under managing of a home. And then the last thing, and I was a little bit, you know. It's, hmm, it was easy to say for me because this is how I live my life, but it's hard to say to the masses, but spiritually minded, because not everybody believes what I believe, but you have to be a person that is spiritually, a wife should be spiritually minded. She has to discern things. She has to have that order. She has to have that discipline. She has to keep the evilness out. <laughs> she has to be the one. See, sometimes women see things that men just don't see. You know, I gave the example of the four tires. A man would be like, I'm getting a good deal. A woman would be like, oh, God, somebody's going to get us. <laughs> I know I would. I'd be like, no, they're going to come looking for them tires. So we have to be that to add that type of balance so we can all, again, become of one flesh. And I just believe that. So yes. I'm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you talk about women seeing a different perspective, I have seen, in fact, we were talking, my sisters and I, um, 
we uh, over the 4th of July weekend, we were just sitting down, you know, just talking with all our husbands. And we were talking about how sometimes we see some women come to the husband being too touchy feely. And the husbands are like, ah, oh, well, she's nice. And we're like, no, 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 that touchy feely is different. You know, it, that, it, that's, that's not good intentions. That's uh, something that a, a, a normal married woman does. So they see it different. And that's where the, the woman's, you know, kind of intuition or feeling, that's where it pays, plays a role. It's so important. That's why, you know, we are just so different. Men and women have to have that differences to complement in the end. Absolutely. And the men don't see it. They really, really don't. I'm like, come on. I'm they don't. Could, and my husband be like, I said, you see that? He'd be like, what? I'm like, don't even worry about it. I'm watching. Sure. <laughs> I'm paying attention. That's what I'm talking about influence. But you know, we are in such denial. We pretend like it doesn't happen. I'm saying y'all, please stop it. This is what can ruin a good relationship. Uh, Chef Shapiro, Pino, Chef Pino, um, thank you so much for your $20 super chat. I love it. Yes. Uh, in a situation with both spouses working, um, there is a critical, crucial member that should be added to the family. The needed member is work-life balance. Without it, we'll have a nice bag, but an ungrounded family lifestyle. You are exactly right. You get the money line. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Chef, you made a really good point. Um, and often that goes back to you delegating or you, you're stating how you actually want as a leader of your home, how you want that to be done. I do know that we often want the money because we want the things, but we have to adjust our life or our wants with what's best. So nothing should supersede that marriage if you want that long-term marriage because these, anything that keeps you out in the world <laughs> too long is not a plus for a marriage. You have to you have to meet up with your spouse every night and you have to say, babe, what's going on? How was your day? We have to download or process or however you want to say it with each other. We have to stay connected. We have to every day be, work on becoming one of one flesh with that person. Now, this is if you want a long term relationship with your wife or your spouse. Now, I often hear all the time and I don't know why, but I hear women a lot of times um, in men, too. It seems like they really don't like their spouses. They don't like them. They, they do everything they can to get away from them. They say things like, oh, man, I got to go home now. You know, they actually want to be out, you know, in the in the streets doing whatever instead of being at home. And I'm saying to myself, dog, you can really get what you need at home, but you got to make it work. You have to feed into it. It's what you make it. Don't right. disallow. Don't keep allowing this world to dictate what your home life looks like. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it might be a situation where you know the wife doesn't the wife is finds him being home where she dumps all of her worries onto him not understanding that he's been out there doing all the fighting when he comes home he's going to be hearing all that stuff that really in the end it's it's not as important the important the important thing is to give him peace. He comes home, everything else should not even be an issue. I'm lucky because I don't have any kids. I guess that if you had kids, it's a little different. Uh, but I'm thinking that what could be the major issues that you could have with kids, unless it's, you know, the kids are sick, but everything else you should, when your husband is coming home, at least give him that one hour to just decompress because it could be that he's just overwhelmed when he gets home. The children crying, the children, you know, just he doesn't come to peace. He doesn't come home to to a peaceful home. And I guess, you know, I'm, I don't have the, um, I haven't had the opportunity to welcome my husband with the kids screaming and with all of that baggage. I can't imagine it might be a hard thing to do but it would have to be somebody that has children to kind of give that perspective. You're exactly right. And, um, 
you know what, Luke Hazel, we gotta, we have to, I have to be careful with that because I'm on this platform because I'm in the same situation you are. I don't have that. So I'm, I'm speaking to a woman that doesn't have that pool. So we do have to have empathy for those women, yes. but we still have to um, be an example for them because it, it still can be order to that. There still needs to be a way that this has to be done. I do get though that that could be very overwhelming, but what we have to add to this instruction is we have to be intentional. So when you're going into a marriage and you have and ladies who are not married yet, you have to be intentional on when you decide to have those babies. You know, if you need to put five years behind you or 10 years behind you in that marriage before you have those babies, then you need to do it. You first got to build that relationship because if you don't, then you may be doing some running around with your head cut off until a time because kids, kids require. Can I say something? Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Well, but can I, can I say something? Um, I, another one who doesn't have children, but what you said is um, correct maybe plan out your children but i was going to say i thought you were going to go this route when you go into marriage and you realize that i have to put myself second to to my husband so you un, you go in understanding this things that you may not be able to dump off on him so maybe separate the two what's more important if my husband is a problem solver then make sure what i bring to him is something that is solvable so he can solve the problem i'm not just dumping on him because he still needs to release because he's still protecting and providing for this family so it's all about being aware of what's going on aware of what your husband is doing and also being okay with knowing that i'm this immediate need met right now because right now than i am and but that's that's a way bigger situation and that's a way deeper relationship and that's a way different wife well, that's the that's the wife we're talking about, though. But you have to be you, you're becoming that it's because you remember you're becoming one with your husband. So what you're saying is I got to learn him first. I got to figure out what makes him tick. So that means I have to put my energies into him to know exactly what you said, because otherwise you're not going to know. You're not going to know. But if you had somebody to say, listen, learn that man, read a book about that man, pray over him, figure out who he is, then you'll get an idea. But again, it's not I don't I don't hear many people t teaching this or even talking about it, but here we are. We're talking about it. So going in, it would make like a seamless marriage thing. Wouldn't you like to have a seamless marriage? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no issues. How about right. that? Woo, what is that? But um, it was something I was getting ready. Would you like to have that? Would you like to have that? Would you like to have a seamless marriage? It would be marriage? nice. But you know what? You don't you need those challenges to to figure out how to how you're going to live your life with this person for the That's next why. 10, 20, 30 years. So, and you know, you're going to have those ups and downs. You're going to have those, you know, boring times, you know, monotone times. And, you know, you got to just go with it because again, once you have peace and then something major comes in, then it goes down yeah. and it comes in. And that's how you know, you know, who, which strength, to, you know, you might have some strengths and one of those challenges, your husband might have strengths another. So, I mean, I think challenges are important to have in a, in a relationship. You can't, it, you know, That's why I, it's, yeah, no. <laughs> Listen, David says, no, they don't, no, they don't SB. They only want to talk about getting the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Struggle brings character. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I think that too. Now I believe yes. that. I, yes. I, I believe in that wholeheartedly because listen, and I, I might be just saying too much, but if I met a man, if my husband was a millionaire when I met him, I wouldn't have married him. I couldn't have married him. I wouldn't have been able to do it because all the priority was been jacked up. My head would have been twisting and turning. I'd be like, I don't get it. This is not right. <laughs> I couldn't have, I, you know, you know, you know, some people say, you know, I was probably, I know there are some people, but you remember that little, what was that, that show? the is it bumblebee i know i'm saying it wrong pineapple the pineapple show oh yeah yeah and everybody was going crazy because the guy was supposed to be high figure or high value and all that and all that i was with the young girl i was totally with her because I, I he did he didn't move me in a way that i'm thinking you know money is not gonna move me it's got to be something else because i'm talking about being married for life just because he can give me the pleasures of life i happen to feel like me and my man together on one accord will get what we need 
So yeah. it doesn't, you don't have to necessarily come in with, in the door with those things. That doesn't, that doesn't matter to me because if he's so much about those things, he can't be about me. And that's, that's scary to me. Don't nobody want to, they don't want to hear that security boss. They don't, they don't believe you when you. They don't believe what? You, Hi, Brittany, it's messing up. They don't believe what? I said, they don't believe you when you say you want more from a man than just what he can provide. Okay. And, what they, and also what they don't get is that, you know, all these high value men that they talk about, those high value men are high value because they spend almost 20 hours a day doing their work. So exactly. you may think that these high value men are going to take him to Fiji and all of these islands with what time? What he's doing is focusing on getting the money, doing, making the deals and making, you know, getting, staying within the high value environment that he's in. So, you know, they're, they're reading too many romantic comedies to think that life works that way. It doesn't. If you're going to have a high value man, you're going to have a man that's going to be spending most of his life outside the home, outside doing, making deals, going on weekends, doing other things that you don't know. So those women that think that, you know, the man is not going to cheat on them or whatever, you know, they're going to be going crazy because they're going to be thinking, oh, my God, this guy is going to be doing things with somebody else, even though he's going to be working, but they're not going to be understanding that that guy has to go on weekend vac weekend deals um, and bring in the money. So they don't understand that being high value is not as, as they painted on the movies and on TV and fairy tales. Can I say something on that? Yes. Just to take it, just to take it on another note, not the note of he might be cheating, but just to go back to what security boss says, people sometimes get money and, um, those type of characteristics mis mixed up. Like a man who is out there working, doing things, has integrity, all that stuff, that's what is attractive. That other stuff comes with it. And so for people to feel like that you want a high value man because he has money, don't you understand that how he got there might be a reason why he's attractive and not necessarily the outcome? So for instance, if I work 16 hours a day, yeah, I might make money when I do that, but you missing the fact that I have sacrifice that's built into that. I have um, discipline that's built into that. Those are all the characteristics that make me get up and go out there and make that money. So we miss those core value, um, those core values of a man and then go straight to the results and then people say that that may be why someone wants someone and, and we miss the the very essence of what what even got them there in the first place and not knowing that we can see that part as women and say that that's what may have attracted us to them not necessarily the outcome but that's just me so let me say this i want to say this and modern resistance man hello i was just getting ready to invite you up but anyway let me say this before you say anything let me Brittany and luke casely and everybody in the chat for me I want to know what keeps a person more so than how he makes his money. Does that make sense? I want to know what keeps him. I want to know about his relationship with the creator. Because, you know, if he's out there pimping, slanging, scamming, and got plenty of money, it doesn't do me any good if he's put me, listen, that might be one of them times I can't testify against my husband, but I really don't want, to, I don't want to be around him. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want the spirit in my house. I don't want to fall underneath it. I don't care. Listen, my husband and I have accomplished six figures. That's nothing about money is easy. Money's easy. You got you, you have to figure out what keeps you. It's just not, it's not about the six figures, but I'm not going to knock anybody's plans. I, I get it. You know, I'm, I get it. I, you know, I don't want to take box breaks keep me security boss. I love your hair. Thank you. Thank you. So listen, guys, let's do Daryl Long. How are you, sir? Let's do his um, super chat. He says, SB, love the transparency on this show. Thank you so much for that. It's not enough people being honest and we wonder why we have these miscommunications. Here's your flowers. Thank you so much. And you get the money line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 
so much. <laughs> that's what we do. When, uh, that's what you do when you get nine 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 up on your super chats. You give them the money line. I see. Wow, man, I got some work to do then. <laughs> So listen, I love I like your background. I love what you're wearing. The red? Yeah, well, the <laughs> I'm teased, I know. <laughs> yeah. Do you know um, your background is red? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you um know Naheem Hines? Say it again. Do you know Naheem Hines? No. You don't? No, ma'am. So what, you just like red? Is that what it is? Well, actually, like uh, a lot of my subscribers, them they like to send gifts and things like that. So depending on what state they are from or what college they went to, they'll just send it in, and I'll tell them. I say, I'll sport it. Y'all send it. I'll sport it. So he was one of the um. He's a he's a professional NFL football player that went to that school, and he was oh, on okay. my show. He was on my dating show uh, last. Well, how long has it been now, y'all? About a month and a half ago. Naheem Hines is his name. He went there. Okay, yeah. nice, nice, nice. I've been listening to you guys for quite a while right now, and I'm just actually it's something that I'm completely just like loving right now. And because one, I see that this 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 one thing you guys are doing right now is not talked about enough. And two, I think that what you ladies are displaying right now is something that I feel that every preteen teenager or woman that's possibly looking to get married need to see more discussions like this and even though it can be done by any woman but i definitely know that the representation of black women speaking like this is something that they need to see because the way that things are being portrayed right now is setting a lot of these ladies up for failure completely setting them up for failure because i don't care what anybody says i mean you saw me on chaotic truth channel the other day and got a little background of where i grew up at and how i grew up around the ghetto the hood and all that and actually flipped all that around became professional in the medical field and i knew that the people I grew up around in the hood, I knew I would never want a woman like that. All I mean, I would, I just, I could not stand the loudness. I couldn't stand the, I, mm, mm, you go, uh, you better. Uh. Oh my God. Like it was such a turnoff. And the only people that were turned on to that and the type of men that were turned on to that was ones that was not trying to do nothing more than hit it. That was it. Because at the time, I couldn't articulate it as a teenager, but I knew within myself, those type of girls that was real like that, they were loud like that, they were real loose like that, it was a sign of weakness to men. It's like, oh, hey, that girl that's flaming off at the mouth like that, the one that's running their mouth, that's super loud, always trying to fight, always just get those can be easy, easy. You know, there's no integrity behind her. She's easy to get. Don't take much to get a woman like that. So, um, excuse me, got a little eyelash here. Um, so what I wrote down is that, you know, women that you guys were talking about earlier especially uh i might say this wrong Lou castley okay uh when she was saying how women dress etc that is really good that is really deep because a lot of men we know within ourselves if a woman is walking around and she's dressing sexy it's a reason why it's called sexy because it makes me want to have sex it doesn't make me want to get to know you. It doesn't make me want to know if you got an Ivy League education. I don't even care about that. All I see is booty, boobs, or some sexy, silky looking legs. I just think about what am I going to be? Ooh, that's that's how a lot of men are thinking. We're not thinking like, I bet that lady right there is real classy. No, want to hit, want to smash, want to have sex. Now, in the mind, they already be drawing up a plan. I can whine her. I can dine her. I can say the right things and all that stuff like that. But the ultimate goal is what you put out. It's for sex. Right. So um, I've been married for 21 years and folks will look at me like, do you look like a freaking kid? And it's a reason why, yeah. because <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason why, because the type of things that you guys are talking about right now, that's what attracted me to my wife. I wanted a woman. I wanted a woman that was going to be classy, a woman that was going to be soft spoken, a woman that definitely was about the Lord. And she knew exactly where her place was in the Lord. Now, all of a sudden. What do you mean her place? What's well, see, they, they don't understand that. And a lot of people get hung up on that is because this um <clears throat> this current system is teaching you that if a man is to be the head of the household, like somehow that's actually making you inferior. And that's completely the opposite. It's a reason why God said that. He said he made the woman for the man. He made her to be a help me. And then on top of that, he told her he shall rule over you. People miss that point. Rule over me. Ain't no man going to rule. See, you're missing the point. You're missing the whole point of that phrase rule. And then later on, we know that in, in the Bible says how God is ahead of Christ. Christ is ahead of man. Man is ahead of the woman. Ain't no man. See, 
everything that God has set up, he made us, he created us, he knows us. So it's a reason why he set those things in place because not that he's trying to trap us or make nobody feel beneath anybody is because he knows that if it stays in that order, that it's going to make everything well, it's going to make actually your relationship well, but people gotten away from that. Everything that God established in the way that he wanted it to be, this system is telling you guys to do the complete opposite. They're telling you guys, you don't need a man. They're telling you guys, you get that education. You can do it all on your own. They're telling you, you go out there and make that money as if money equates to relationship because it don't, because if it did, what did Adam and Eve have? Did, did Adam have an education? Did Adam have an education? Did Adam have a Mercedes Benz or the house? No, he didn't have any of that. So I always tell people, the young people that I talk to, the young women, is that if you're going after things, then don't get upset and don't get mad when you get into a thing type relationship. It's not even really a relationship. It's just a a thing association because then they get mad. Well, he don't love me. He seems like he don't want to spend no time with me. He seems like he oh you you got in it not for a relationship. You got in it for things. And what you're getting out of that man is a result of what you wanted was nothing more than things. So what else is he going to give you? He's not going to give you love. He's not going to give you companionship. He's not going to make you feel like a woman. He's going to make you feel like you just want a thing. So I'm going to treat you like you just want a things. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Renaissance man, how they be, how they be saying it again? What they be saying? I don't need no man. I can do stuff on my own. I got my own money. I don't need any of that stuff like that. I can do things on my own. I do not need a man, but I can do this. I can, I got this. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, before we go any further, let me do this. Erin, thank you so much for your $5. Thank you. that the man just worked 16 yep. hours and she's asking him to change diapers and wash dishes. Erin, <laughs> what are you talking about, Erin? I felt that. Did y'all just feel that? Erin, I'm, yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Can I, ooh, I got something to say on that. And I got something to say to that right there. You know how you got a lot of people to say things like, um, Oh man, all these men. So what you were? So what? So so what? I'm just supposed to stay at home and slave in the kitchen and wash dishes and cook and all this stuff like that. What get a lot of people mixed up with that again is that it, that is an attack. What a lot of people do not understand is this: as a young man growing up, if you come up in the household, right? What your mom did, especially if your dad worked, what your mom did for you in the household gives you the most nostalgic feelings and things like that that's why people don't understand when a, a man men are so attracted to women that do that number one is because it's nostalgic to us we remember what it was like with our mom when my mom cooked this and the smell of the house or we remember how it was my mom was so nice to me how she was so sweet to me we remember how my mom made sure that what was she you know she taught us how to clean our beds so having a clean room so a lot of people say i'm not about to be his mama no you miss the point it's not that i want you to be my mom it's just that the things that my mom created in that house that made me feel so good and so you know uh validated within myself that wife is pushing off those same feelings which in part would make me want to do anything for her because she's bringing me that nostalgic feeling I don't want my mama. It's just that those feelings that my mom brought, they kept everything nice and warm and wholesome. That wife is bringing that. Wow. I like that. So, ladies, did y'all hear that? This man, modern renaissance man, has been married 21 years. Listen, before he goes, I want him to tell y'all about his channel. But we're going to get to the super chat first. But I want to say hello to Chef and thank you. But we're going to do this super chat first. Yeah. Hey, Freezy. Hope you're doing hey, well. Lizzie. Freezy says, ruling over women means Ephesians 5 and 25, the new King, King James Virgin husband. Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I like that. <laughs> Thank you so can much. Yes. Can I just um I just wanted to say thank you for letting me on the panel. I have to take a nap. I have a long, you know, I'm, I'm going to meet some people in a in about a, two hours and then i have late night live stream but i wanted to come up because you said my name chef i'm so happy to see you luke casey thank you and mr uh martin renaissance man you are a good uh actor and security boss i love you always <laughs> you so, got to, look to the chat you gotta go to his channel i'm gonna let him shout that out but y'all gotta check out his channel he's something else but yeah <laughs> uh, so i just wanted to say bye before everybody else said bye and chef i will be listening but i love the fact that we're on the panel again today uh again sweetie so yeah, Brittany, you already know you family thank you brit for uh yes. for camming up you know we appreciate you so much look take a nap and we'll see you soon yeah all right bye-bye no problem bye all right chef welcome thank you thank you thank you for allowing me up onto your platform my sister how are you I'm doing well no no listen you can you're welcome here this is SB Nation five stars so what would you add to this conversation, sir? 
you already have, but what? <laughs> yeah, that's what you like to add. So I, I really, really appreciated what uh, Modern Renaissance Man stated. Dude looks, first of all, dude looks like he's 27, 28 years old. <laughs> so that 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 21 years of marriage, I'm like, what the hell is going on? He's on some real Benjamin Button right now. If that's <laughs> the case, <laughs> you feel me? But um, I want to kind of tag along into something that he stated. He made a, a vital point in terms of um, what you deal with um, and you take into your relationships, for instance, your relationship with your mother, relationship with your dad and the impacts of that, you know? But I believe that in terms of life, there's a, a spectrum. Join. Black David, my brother. You know, there's a spectrum and, and there's going to be, you know, sugar, sugar. sugar is, 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 is something that we all love. Uh, salt brings out flavors and we love salt, but too much of either of them create a problem, an issue. So I think that things exist on, on a spectrum. You'll have situations where somebody that was loved so much by their mom and catered to so much by their mom, when they enter into another relationship, expectations there's going to be different sets of expectations and different things that 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 spouse expects that his wife was not even prepared for you know there can be negativity you know there's these things we have called trauma bonding mm. where you get two people that may have gone through the same thing end up connecting to each other it's not necessarily for a positive reason though it's in spite of a negative reason. I know how to help you nurse your wounds through that pain because I had that pain, but we're not always supposed to be together. That's why when people are in rehab, they tell them don't date anybody else in rehab. Right. <laughs> you know, The only person in rehab you speak to is your sponsor. So I believe that balance and I, I use the term balance you know, because I try to bring balance to a lot of thought processes. There's going to have to be a high degree of balance in terms of how we view those relationships that that person had with their predecessors, with their parents, because they could have had an awesome relationship, but there's things that were transferred to them, right? Not trying to do a shameless plug. I've been in the spirit all day. I have a show on Saturday that I'm doing called STDs, Spiritually Transmitted Diseases. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to leave it at that. But there's a lot. There's a lot that we transfer. There's a lot of things that we, we believe make us happy that we transfer on to the other people that we're with. But that may not actually be, you know, a, a positive uh, introduction into that person's life. Unsolicited security boss, her medical prescription that's going to make her better may kill me. We're different individuals. So I think that we have to understand that 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 transfer of energy. I know I'm long-winded. I apologize. Modern Renaissance man, you've been married 21 years, right? Yes, sir. Watch this. You ever notice the first time when your wife started using the slang that you normally use that she never used before. And all of a sudden she's using the slang terminology. It's like, whoa. And then you yep. might do it too. Yep. Love brings down our walls. It makes us vulnerable. When we love, we choose to open up the bandwidth of our heart to that person, which opens up a highway, a super highway of a feeling of trauma, of love, of happiness, of and all of these different things. So we have to be conscious you know, and aware of, of the spectrums of, of what we think is good and not good because what you think is not good may actually have a positive impact on you, you know? So I just had to throw that out there. All right. So listen, Shep, can you um, check the channel? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my channel is, it's uh, Chef Shapino, just like it shows on there. You know, uh, we just got monetized a little while ago in June. But, uh, you know, I swear, I thought that I was subscribed to you. There was somebody, I call her my professor in this YouTube thing. You know, she's uh, works with you a lot. Uh, Let 
over the top WME. Oh yeah, call it. yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So I learned about you through Colette a while back. So I've been watching in the wings. I don't know why I wasn't subscribed, but I am subscribed now. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. And we appreciate you over here and you are definitely welcome. Well, I appreciate you as well. Um, but I just wanted to come in and drop. Well, you know what? Go ahead, Dave. I got to let my Before you walk away, Chef, I like what you said when you say STD, spiritual transmitted disease. And the way you said it that way, I fully grab what you're trying to say about that particular topic. I learned that at the age of 14, 15. That's the next level of understanding. Not too many people can grab what you're going to teach them. So I was looking forward to see that broadcast. Some of you a shout out for that. Because that. It's not being talked about much, but I think it's heavily needed within the black community because too many people think they know much what's going on, but they have no clue what that means. I appreciate, so I appreciate it. it. All right. So, Black David, how are you? But let's do the super chat before you say anything. It is riding the six. And she says earlier this year, my husband asked me, I mean, asked, asked we respect the Sabbath. It was hard at first because Saturday was for cleaning, Sunday for cooking. It has brought us much closer because now Saturday is just us and the world. You get the money line. Money line. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Give me mine. I'm going to run it every time. Give me mine. Going up, need no decline. Yeah, yeah. Riding the six, thank you so much for that super chat. I bet you you're gonna have to come up one day because I bet you got some good stories. We need to talk. How about that? But anyway, let's, let's let's see. Was that um who was first? Black David, I think you were first. What you got, sir? Um, I was enjoying the conversation when I got off the clock. I listened to some of the keynote that was going on. We can't hear you, Black David. Turn your mic up or something. Um, excuse me, I'm trying to control my deep voice. My brother, hey, okay, yeah, he can't hear you. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> As I was trying to say, um, modern with when I saw man, you hit it on the nail when you described those type of personality shit because I do the same exact thing, trying to break it down to people to fully understand what was going on. Because I believe, just like you said, people are walking with what was being set for us to follow after to make sure we have a fulfilling life, but instead. Everybody or most people want to rewrite what's being taught and say that's outdated. That's the term I've been hearing a lot. In some churches, I know that they want to rewrite the Bible. They say, oh, this is not meant for today's modern time. I'm like, what you mean by that? Elaborate. Now, when they go down that way, I try my best not to go nerd out on them or Bible geek on them. But sometimes I'll be forced to do so when you have old school Bible teacher back in Africa who teach you the depth and teach you how to go so deep to the point you get lost in it and you stay there for a while, long while before you come out. By the time you come out, your mind take completely different. You start to see things in a different limelight, a different view. And you start to fully grab and be grateful for where you're at. But we at the stage, people want things now. No one have the patience. No one got the time to build the foundation ever want to get a house first without the foundation i know everybody knows this part of the scripture when you take people have shaky foundation and they build a house upon when the storm hits it doesn't stay together they fall apart yeah but never trying to build a foundation first and from there build upward every time build downward like it's easy to be done everybody want to be the quick fix guru I try not to say too much to people because I realize when you speak out, they're afraid they say, you think you know everything, you think you know so much. It's not about me knowing so much. I always say I like to pick the brain of my elders been before me. And I had a bad habit doing that throughout my 20s. I go to many elders who have been married for 40, 50, 60 years. I don't care how long you talk. I'm going to sit right there. I'm going to pick all your knowledge. I'm going to pick all your wisdom. If it's not enough, I'll still jack for more. I need to get everything I need to know because I look at my generation and it was jacked up. I'm 43, about to be 44. And they told me in advance, your generation is going to mess it up real bad. And I watch and I see what you're talking about. We're totally true. He hit it on the nail. We don't, we think we know everything, but we don't know jack. 
he asked me a question. Why are you going to ask me so much questions? I said, well, I was taught them that I was taught to seek elders, get the wisdom, learn from them, take notes. If you don't understand, ask more questions. Mm-hmm. My generation was like, man, screw them. They don't know Jack. I will consider a weirdo. They're mm-hmm. doing that. And I look at today's society, I look at today's population of black people. Yesterday, Kino hit me hard. I didn't want to say it before for the past couple of years, but Uncle Stu said it best. There are two black Americans, which I already knew for a long time. There's been a divide. Those who saw the care in their black community and don't want to wait too much time trying to fix it, decide to find like minded people to build another separate society. It's been known for so long, it's not new. Problem is, no one trying to take the time out. My mom could taught me, step back, hang in the shadow, watch and observe, and learn what you're seeing. Don't be too quick to jump. You don't have to be in the driver lane. You can sit back in the passenger seat and just watch and observe. And sometimes when you page and you hear that little subtle voice, it will let you know where you need to be at. How many people take the time out to listen to that subtle sort of voice to direct it to the right path, or you think you know it all? Then, by the time you wait, there, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years, and you probably have time with the whole life with the waste. Now, I realize if you put a step back, observe, know your weakness, know your flaw, work on yourself first before you go to the next level, then when you face situation, it becomes easy. Right. All right, all right, black man. I like that. I mean, not black man. I see y'all confusing. <laughs> Let me say this different. All right, David. I'm not gonna call you Black David and then Black man. You know, I know who you are, but anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to call you the model. I don't want to call I, you the stripper. Yeah, he is the stripper. Yeah, yeah, he's the he's the. I know uh, you strip in your pastime, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, he's the Nigerian sledgehammer. I don't want to do that. Yeah. So, they but call, no, they call him Juicy Fufu. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to study this this two separate worlds things. We're gonna have to talk about that a little bit a little bit more. Black but, man, I'm gonna hold you for this. <laughs> but listen, uh, black man, black man, I feel to welcome. How are you, sir? I'm good. Sugarfoot just got in from work. Had to work a little later than expected, but it's okay. I'm here. To, I'm here now to see the Nigerian sledgehammer in the building tonight. It's so good to see you, Modern Renaissance man. How are you tonight, Luke Casey, the beautiful and wonderful and very intelligent Luke Casey, twenty in the building. Chef Chapino, my guy, one of my biggest supporters. Come on, my guy. It's good to see you tonight. And last but not least, the queen herself of YouTube. Then went got herself slain in the spirit with her hair. I'm got really her hanging down. Yeah. Oh, like she the, she's the queen uh, right now. Look at your hair like you the security boss of your own island. They call it Ball Strip. Ball Strip Island. Yes. Oh, yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is strip? Strip what? You're not stripping. <laughs> strip <laughs> trip. Boss but, Trip. Uh, yeah, come on, boss. Come on now. I wouldn't do that. You don't miss the boss in the back. You you're on the boss trip. trip. You, you're on the trip. You're on the bus trip. On the trip. Come on now. Boss Trip Island now. Come oh, on boss now. Trip. Oh, yeah. Boss Trip. <laughs> Dearly beloved. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Black Men. So what you got? Have you been listening? I, a little bit uh, because, uh, yeah, I had a lot going on today. A, a little bit. But uh, I, I, looking at the title here, does a, does a good man fulfill a woman's purpose? It all depends on the man's choice. I, I feel, I, well, I'm not going to say I feel. I know that if a man chooses well, all is well. But if he does not choose well, all is hell. That's bars. <laughs> Y'all write that down. Um, because I, it, what happens, <clears throat> you can't change people. And what a lot of men do, I'll talk about men first. Men will choose women and know the, see the red flags, know that their mom is toxic sister, toxic brother, toxic niece, toxic right? baby mama's over here, baby mama's over there. And you see all this toxicity and you think, I'm going to get her and I'm going to change her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mold her into what I want her to be. But even in, in the animal kingdom, when you go to get a dog trained and a dog is seven years old, they're going to tell you that it's a possibility this dog not going to listen to anything that I'm going to say because he's already set in his ways. So my message for men is don't try to be with women just because they find, just because they got something they can, they can throw back and you'll enjoy it. But you got to start here. 
You, and you got to start here because if you don't start here first and then here, you got to get the head first, then the heart. You got to know what's going on up top. And I'm not saying women are crazy and they throw it off. Some of them very much are. But you got to know who you're dealing with and you can't change anybody. Lord, have mercy. If I, if I can't say anything else to anybody else, if I die today, remember I said you can't change anybody. You can't change them. Uh, they are who they are. And some people want, and like I said, again, if you do it correctly, some people go through transitions and they become great. Some people don't want to transition because, like I always say, some people enjoy. Some people enjoy their toxicity because it, they, they enjoy the attention that it brings them. And when you when you with a person like that, it's hard to work with a person like that. It's hard to be with a person like that. And so I'm telling you guys, please, please, please. Uh, in, in every name south of Africa and stop by Nigeria and see the strippers. Please. <laughs> please, guys. Please. You cannot change people. Get with a woman that when you speak with her, when you walk into a room, she lights up. When you walk into a room, uh, she lights up. And you, and, then it, and vice versa. If, if, if you're going somewhere, she's eloquent and she's soft and caring and nurturing. Okay, but wait a minute. Did you just say eloquent and eloquent, eloquently? Oh, okay. I yeah, you hey, come on now. If I'm wrong, you tell me now. Say eloquent and no, you didn't just make it okay. I yeah, was... you know, I'll put a word in there in a minute, but not today. But okay. uh, but no, no, just get you someone that's uh, even with a man, get you a man that 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 wants to that that is a leader, but he also is attached to he's also attached to being uh that strong leader in your life. And he's not using you as a doormat. He's not saying that you're trash. He's he's not treating you a certain way. But a man that's going in the right di in, in the right direction. And and when you bring those two people together, and y'all don't have to get up every morning and take antidepressants together, and y'all ain't y'all ain't got to look in the in the drawer and see if both of your guns are loaded because you don't know who's gonna snap first. <laughs> y'all ain't got to go in the kitchen and, and and have the dog taste the orange juice first to see who can pours the orange juice. You know, when you when you're not dealing with that type of thing, you're 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 living in a, in a you're living in a. It's not going to be perfect because you're going to have disagreements and you know, like like you said, uh, security boss, you have moments with with Mr. Boss, but it always goes back around to you loving him. He's loving you, and if you can't have that, guys, man, listen, leave leave him in the restaurant. <laughs> so, black man, I'm I'm gonna share something with you. <clears throat> yeah, what you said a moment ago must needed to be said for somebody. Because that topic and what we've been talking about is for women. We've been talking about women the whole time. My Lord. <laughs> so you must need to share that information with somebody because we've been talking about women becoming wives mm -hmm. the whole time. So somebody needed to hear it, and I appreciate you for it. Absolutely. All right. Hey, so, you act, so you're acting kind of different with this hair now, security boss. Your tone is a little lower, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you throwing your hair, you throwing your hair every 30 seconds. Hey, there it is. hey, give me them camera angles, Mr. Boss. Give me one more. Give me one more. Hey, there it is. Uh oh, hey, hey, hey. There we go. Come she on, already, man. Look, she already blew my um my third quarter super chat budget just on the braids alone, man. Man, I'm trying to tell you. So I'm, so I'm rhyming. I'm I'm doing rhyming until like October. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys. Sir, Sir Hale, how are you? My guy. I am fantastic. How are you? Doing good. I have not seen you on my panel in quite some time. Welcome. Thanks so much. I've started school again, so I'm working on a degree. Um, and so it's been taking up all of my time. So, but I wanted to be here because this conversation is just awesome. So I wanted to give some perspective. Thank before, you. Before you go, Sir Hale. It is amazing to me, guys. Look at the black men on this panel. But it's only two black men here with three successful ones. Shapino is a great cook. Look out for him. He needs a book, right? But ain't nothing like two dark-skinned strippers on the <laughs> panel tonight. <laughs> we got Black Sadden as Sir Hell Speaks. And we got the Nigerian Sledgehammer in the building tonight. Oh, some music come on. Y'all might listen here. I tell y'all, I always give I, I'm I'm Sir Hell's Uncle hype Walsh, man. Please don't do it. Listen, here's the music listen. coming right I'm now. Sir I Hell, hear it I, and I, I feel listen. it. I'm Sir Hell. <laughs> I'm Sir Hell's <laughs> hype man. Yeah, no more sauce. Sir Hell is a is he is a man of God. And I always say that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on an ass. And that's what we look at on Sunday. 
But if you catch Sir Hale on Saturday, he's shaking his. Ladies and gentlemen, yours truly, Sir Hale, Black Satin, is in the building. <laughs> Bam! Black uh, Uncle, Uncle Boss, if we can just edit that segment out of it really quickly. Screen <laughs> like record. Engaged. <laughs> Shout out to everybody who said. I'm Luke sorry, Modern Reader Sons, man. I apologize. Were you okay? Are you, he's okay? you okay? Okay. Yeah, Luke Kingsley, uh, good to see you. Got him. <laughs> Modern Renaissance, Black Man, Chef, CBN, good to see you guys. Um, so I just wanted to come in really quickly to, to make this point. Is that, does a good man fulfill a woman's purpose or wife's purpose? Absolutely, yes. And here's the thing that makes this true. The reason why this is this question might trigger certain people is because a lot of women have lost this, this one word that starts with a G that makes all this possible, and that's gratitude. Women are no longer grateful for a man. They feel entitled to him. And because of that entitlement, it's almost as if there is, I, I expect a man to come into my life and be a provider, a lover, to, to, to deem me down really well, to put his life on the line. There used to be a day when women showed a level of gratitude for the, I'm grateful for my man. I'm happy about my man. And I think that we won't be, able, women won't be able to truly understand the blessing of a man until they're they're lonely, the world and dried up, looking like raisins and prunes. Come on, don't, Doc. No, don't nobody want it. And they're reflecting, reflecting in regret because they had opportunities to find love and somebody who was going to be there. And they chose to do something different rather have been in the clubs and going out on girl trips than at home on the porch with a man who loved them. You know what I'm saying? And so, ladies, the security boss is real talk in my top three female content creators because not only does she talk the talk, but her life is a demonstration of what she lives. And I truly appreciate this. So listen, ladies, you want a good man, you got to learn how to be grateful for your man. When was the last time you told your man how grateful you are for him? When was the last time you told him how happy you are that he is in your life? If you are not doing these things, you are not qualified for a good man until you learn how to be grateful for the man you have. And that's all I wanted to add. Oh, other way, can can I get some? Okay, listen. So, Sir Hill, listen. I'm so glad that he said that because that is a beautiful, beautiful piece he just put out there. It's amazing because the gratitude comes from women saying, "You know what." When, when was the last time a woman said just because, not just because it's your anniversary, not just because it's the birthday, not because it's Easter Sunday and you want a new dress, not because of that, just get up in the morning when his breath stank, his head nappy before the barbershop, you just get up and say, you know what, baby, I, I really love you and I appreciate you for who you are. Just, just, just take a moment. Just take a moment and think about it. And if you haven't done it, get your ass up. And you go in there and tell your man you're grateful for him before you lose him and he be down in the street uh, with Sister Johnson and they're gonna, you're going to pass by and they're going to be both waving at you with the uh, yard of the month uh, sign in the front yard. So, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, it's get it together. Mr. Lyon say, SB, I'm still waiting on my woman. We ain't had our conversation yet, though. But, uh -oh. but guess what? I gave you some instructions. You don't remember? <laughs> ah, Mr. Logic, she's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Just continue. Continue Mama. doing what you're doing. You, you'll see what I'm saying. You'll see what I'm saying. So anyway, listen, I appreciate that, guys. That was that was needed. But let me tell you something, Sir Hill, on to add to what you said. They that is a real thing now. I know it was a real thing, but I'm gonna add to it. But it's a real, real thing because somebody did a whole um commercial and no, 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 I don't want to lie. It was on Dr. Phil. Mm. And they added another T to it. And if you look at gratitude with an additional T, there's attitude in it. Bars. Did y'all just hear hey, that? Hey, bars. Yeah. I love it. Y'all didn't did love it. do that, did you? You didn't right. know it. Come on. Do y'all see that? If you add an additional T, it's attitude within it. And they were saying that is the problem with us right now. Attitudes. Our attitudes are jacked up. But it wasn't in marriage. No, no, no. Yes, it was. It was. It was in marriage. It was in marriage relationships. Um, the message is, far as the gratitude goes, we need to get rid of the attitudes and we need to show each other every day how much we appreciate the other. Mm -hmm. Can I jump in? Absolutely. Yeah. You just cook, you know, so 
chef is is my passion but you know i'm actually a corporate executive for a large company and in terms of the trainings that i give and uh, the motivation that i give one of the tenets is and this is one of my statements that people repeat allow your gratitude to supersede your attitude see what i'm saying it's a thing it's a it's a real thing why because attitude is is more so a feeling that's based on a certain level of entitlement attitude is your reaction you know to the 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 precipitating factor which is the glass that you perceive as being half full when gratitude that's what attitude was but gratitude is actually you being thankful that you have half a cup of water to drink when there's others that have none absolutely that was good it's a level of training it's a martial art oh you know it it you have to have we're human beings we are basic mortal human beings you know we're messed up we all have that ish with us every (laughs) single last one of us and it's always going to be like that because our creator he allowed his son to be taken you know for our sins so we understand we have issues with us and if we start to look further on what we can gain as opposed to what we expected and did not get you're going to have a a much better outlook on life you know in terms of the way that you absorb different things so you know it stood out when you mentioned the gratitude and attitude because that's definitely uh, one of my statements the gratitude has to always far outweigh your attitude you know one is a take one is a give and your gratitude actually can literally empower something someone else you telling somebody thank you for something they did that they just thought was regular and them knowing that they were able to give you that that feeling of satisfaction where you had to thank them that's an empowering thing to another person and doing that is actually going to make all of us stronger individuals within this ecosystem of life because we're going to progressively make other people stronger by not looking at what they didn't do that I was expecting, but me being able to appreciate who they are and what they've already done, you know, and be gracious about it. Very good. I like that modern Renaissance man. I think you were next. And then Luke Casey, I think you're trying to say something also. Let me roll up. I I, I do want to say this. I didn't expect to pop in. I have a um, 8.30 show on on another network. But, you know, I did want to thank you for allowing me up here and in my inaugural. So this is the first and ain't the last visit to unsolicited security boss. I appreciate you, Lucasley. I love it when you're not on the avatar, you know, modern (laughs) renaissance man. I appreciate you. You are my hero. 21 years. Keep it going, brother. Sir Hell Speaks, man, the ubiquitous one. I don't have to say anything. He already knows where the respect lies. Black man unfiltered. He may be bigger than me, but he's still my little bro, and I have nothing but support to him. He's the first first person I ever used my community wall on. Appreciate and, you, brother. And congratulations you. on your 1,000 subscribers, my guy. Yes. Appreciate you, too, as Sweet. well. Thank you. And Canadian-born Nigerian, Black David. You know when African people, West African people, put an O at the end of a statement? That's exclamation point. <laughs> you are my boy, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, love, and light to all. Appreciate you for having me up here. Thank Chef you. Out. Thank Bye-bye. you. All right. Martin Renzo's man, it's on you. Yeah, hey, I was going to add a little bit to what he was saying is that um, I'll, you know, like whenever we, like me and my wife, whenever we do some counseling a lot of times, or even we, we do some like conferences, I always uh, bring up a point of I see that in church, you know, a lot of women, which especially in the black church, there's way more women in churches than it is men. And right. what I noticed, I said, I tell the women, I said, now, is it going to come a day that I see a lot of you guys are in here? You thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. You did this. You did that. And I'll say now when you get married one day, are you going to tell your husband that same thing? Mm. Then it's like, oh, wait, well, he well, my he, my husband is not Jesus. I, all right. Right. But you, you want your husband to be like Jesus. Right. Yes. Yeah, so uh, like Jesus, did your, does your husband provide? Yeah. Like Jesus, is your husband loving you? Yeah. Well, like Jesus, is he doing X, Y, Z? They'll say, yeah. I say, well. You say thank you openly at church and letting everybody know how much you think of Jesus, right? But what about him? Are you telling him that? So that also is something that I uh, push out because I let people know a lot of times when they think that when you 
are pretty much letting people know these are great things to do and within relationship a lot of people think that is like a demand or that's like some type of thing to make them feel like they just lowered you and it's not because if people only understood and most i mean i don't know who's in here married and who's not i don't know the guys in here really well but i know that when my wife says certain things to me dude i mean i just <sighs> i mean i'm already in the medical field but when my wife says something to me that just like oh my god i'm so tired of, you know she would say todd I, you know what i you know you have been taking care of us even while you were going through college. I really appreciate. It. I'm like, man, what you want? What you trying to give me? What you want, babe? What you want? Like, I mean, I <laughs> yeah. instantly, I instantly get this thing to where it makes me want to actually do more because the fact that she is showing that appreciation, it just makes me want to do more. So it's the same thing like with Jesus and all he healed people and like with the lepers and only one came back and thanked them for it. You know, so that goes both ways too. Of course, you know, I tell my wife all the time. I'm like, babe, I'm like, oh my god, like you are so great at what you do like my god i don't ask you to do this stuff but i mean she's taking care of the home my wife is an awesome cook she's a clean freak whatever and i'm just like babe i'm serious when i say this like i come from the ghetto i grew up with roaches we named our roaches like we come named on man and everything like you have no idea how it feels like i'm like i come home and there's no clothes i mean even though we're not like that anyway my wife but she's such a clean freak and everything and i mean i'm just telling you i didn't ask her to do this for a lot of ladies that might be listening but my wife will have stuff cooked when i get home and she with my son she already on your daddy gotta eat it's already like laid out because my wife had her own relationship with christ i had my own relationship with christ before we became an item and before we actually talked about even getting married or anything we spent most of our time all of our time talking like when you know how people say when they go on dates, they go out to the movies, they go and do this. No, -uh. me and my wife was about conversation. She wanted to know where my head is, where I was in Christ. I wanted to know the same exact thing. We were like competing at who actually was real in this thing called being having a relationship with Christ, right? So, and I was such a, I mean, I came from the hood and all that. I seen what a lot of my family them did when it came to women. I was not like that. When my and my wife first started dating, even when we went on our first date, my wife, we talk about it to this day. When I dropped her off at home and we we're getting ready to leave, my wife went in for like a hug and a kiss. I leaned back and shook her hand. And <laughs> so it's nothing. It would be a lot of reason why, folks, though, before folks say, oh, you're so gentlemanly. No, that wasn't it. It's just that I have not touched a woman or anything. So if I would have felt my wife kiss me and I would have felt her hug me and have some, they would have set something off that didn't need to be set off yet. That's me. So we are 21 years in right now. And if people that are listening right now, something that I would urge a lot of people to watch is something called Black Love. That's on like you can, I think it's on Netflix. It's called Black Love. You might can catch some small little dead bits of it on YouTube, mm -hmm. but it's showing you. And I'm not saying it just because it, it is black couples on there, but they're on there. People who've been married for a long time talking about things that they went through, things they battle. How some days I hate him. Some days I love him. Some days we got this. Some days we got that. Look, the way I handle things, folks, is that if me and my wife get into a big thing, okay, I need a whole day. She knows oh, I'm going to go downstairs. I need a whole day. I need to wind down because I don't want to say something that I'm definitely going to regret and you cannot uncommunicate it. These are things that I think that doesn't get talked about. So I spoke just last week and I'm going to hurry up with this, is that I talked to a group of young folks and I told them and at a school board meeting, what you guys are doing right now is pushing things the wrong way there is they talk they want to push sex i mean sex education in schools and all this they want to push all this education why is there no relationship education being taught in school of teaching kids how not only to be in a relationship but how to act in a relationship what to expect in a relationship and then letting them know that the sexual part of it comes as a benefit of being in a relationship they skip all that and just go to when you have sex one day with your partner they don't even talk about relationship and wonder why these kids are just all over the place wonder why america has the worst divorce rate like in the whole world so um I pride myself on pushing people to relationship first. And I know you heard me say this the other day on Care the Truth. I said, people stick by that lullaby. First come love, then came marriage, then came you with the baby carriage. You do that, you, you said, you won't even Mars. be broke. I mean, two people together that are married have a less chance of being poor on welfare than being single and have a child together and live separately. So that's my piece on that for right Boy, now. Boy, you dropped enough dimes to put a down payment on the house, man. Good job, <laughs> brother. Yes. Excellent point. And that goes back to the dating with intention factor, whereas, you know, I went out with my husband 15 years ago. We went out on a lunch date and we've we've been together ever since because we both were we knew exactly what we wanted out of our relationship. Um, whereas now people are dating just to date, whether just to get lunch, whether to get dinner or just to you know, to lose their ways with one after the other and after the other. And what I say is once you get to the right man, 
What do you have to offer? What is it? What 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 special thing do you have to offer after you've gone through one after the other uh, after several uh, people? Um, so yeah, uh, modern Renaissance man, ex excellent presentation. It was it's about dating with intention. And I'm gonna get going. Time to get dinner ready. Thank you for having me around. Thank you. Um, nice to meet you, modern Renaissance man. Likewise, like yeah. David. Black man, great to see you. Sir Hale, you. great to see you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Thank good night. Good night. Security boss. Yes, sir. Now, I know I caused an earthquake a couple of weeks ago when I told you about what happened with my son. Right? Modern Renaissance man, check your back check. Um, but I'm going to tell you what I told my daughter. I drew um, a picture for my daughter because I'm, I like to show uh, illustrations. And I drew this. A circle with lines to it like this. I told this is a pie. I say now each slice represents the man, any man that you open your legs to. And I say this can be Billy, this could be Charlie, this could be Edward, this could be Jermaine, this could be Eric. When you meet your husband, how many slices of pie are is available for your husband? And she said one. I said right. So you you gonna demand that deserves you only to gets one slice of pie. And you gave the rest of it to men that didn't even didn't even want it, didn't even want you. I said, so what you want to do is keep that pie whole, baby, because one day the right man gonna cut into it, and it'll be sweeter to him than it was for anybody else. I like that. And I'm saying I'm gonna push back. I'm gonna get on that. I like that, man. And I'm gonna throw this in there real quick. What I do with my uh, young girls, I let them know how like how our culture is right now. I have all the dudes stand up, and I give them all a bag of Cheetos, and I just get a little small bag of Cheetos, and I told all the dudes, chew the Cheetos, but don't swallow it. And I gave them a glass of water. And I told the girls, this represents y'all right here. One female. This represents you right here. I said, look at this. Glass of water. Clean. It's pure. Look at that beautiful, sparkling. And I'm going to hand this glass to each dude. And I want each dude to spit the Cheetos out in that glass of water. Each dude, six of them, spit the, glass, spit the Cheetos in a glass of water. I said, now look at this. Does that look good? No, no. So how is it that once you let all these guys put all their nastiness in you, you expect a man to come up and want that mess right there. You demand a man, he better work, he better have a job, he better be staying with his mama, he better rub my feet, he better treat me like a queen. I see a bunch of crap in this glass right now. You expect me to what? Oh, no. Nah. That's why I mean, I'm, I'm just being real. That's why a lot of professional men, I'm just saying, I know a lot of professional men that they go towards the other way. I hate, I'm just being honest. They They will go for the uh like uh white women they'll go for like latino women they'll go for a whole lot of different other women because a lot of people where i grew up at the attitude towards the black man is completely just decimated to us man i mean they we are we we come out of here we we can't we can't win for losing we just can't we already no good we already just gay we already just thugged out we already in prison and now all of a sudden i gotta be all these different things on this list that you have right now, and then yet you, what are you bringing to the table? So, I mean, yeah, that's a good though. I'm, I'm stealing that little wheel thing from you too. Oh, yeah, power. Um, yeah, yeah, man, power. Yeah, but don't goes. forget, don't forget the other part. When they call you a nerd, you're not really wanted because you're not within the data quo oh. because being a nerd. <laughs> so, listen, guys, this has been a fantastic show. Um, Modern Renaissance Man, this is his first time here, but I want him to shout out his show. He has an excellent platform over there. I want you guys to go visit, but I want you to actually, Modern Renaissance Man, tell them what you've done and who you are and Ooh. all that good stuff. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, my channel is called Modern Renaissance Man. It is a variety channel. On my channel, I have a lot of things on there that I do. What I pretty much do is I display the talents that I have, and I didn't give myself the name uh Multiple patients that I've treated have given me the name because of all the different talents that I have. So on the channel, there's comedy, there is healthcare uh, advice, there's things that I wish that my I didn't have my father in my life at all. But I'm on there doing things like showing people how to change brakes on their cars, showing them how to change out an alternator. I'm doing all <laughs> kinds of things. I'm showing you how to. I'm it's weird, but I'm showing people how to change, do things in their house, all kinds of things like that. And it's a variety channel. And um, I'm known, <laughs> I'm known for going viral, 81 million views globally because I spoke out at a school board meeting against some stuff that I think that's plaguing the black community, which landed me on all kinds of different platforms. I, from, I saw you on Roland Martin, my guy. There we go. <laughs> yep. Yep. From, uh, it's okay. There we go. So you know that much then. So, but exactly. yeah, you go over there, check the channel out. I go live a lot. I like to talk openly with people to help people 
no matter what the color or creed is because i'm a part of the kingdom that has no color in it and it's for all god's people and want the best for everybody so you can check it out it's called modern renaissance man i'm on instagram at modern renaissance man with the o in modern being a zero i'm on rumble modern renaissance man i'm on twitter as ty smith and uh yeah i'd love to see you guys all come over there and i'm definitely going to be sending a lot of people your way especially my females and my little young female mentorees i solicited because i don't do this i'm telling you i do not do this for a lot of people there's very few people but i've, I've watched a ton of your videos okay i'm like she yeah yeah if my wife had a youtube channel was doing something i'm like yeah and my wife watched you my wife's like okay yeah she's legit she's for real yeah definitely send those young girls to go watch her stuff that i love it so dearly thank beloved you, thank you and we gotta do a collab sometime soon oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely thank you and black men on field to go ahead and shout yourself out because we get ready to get out of here absolutely man i would also like to do some work with you man i'll send you a um uh i, I mean ig uh renaissance man but anyway guys tonight over in the village uh, of unfiltered land we are going to be talking about how men really feel about girls trips and hot girl summers oh yes 8 30 p.m central standard time i have a panel full of men because the women say the men really don't care about it so we're gonna see what the men say tonight ladies and gentlemen canadian born black david go ahead and shout your channel out we get ready to get out of here and i appreciate uh, it one. Okay, Black Pimp. As I was saying, my channel, which is right now called a CBN Tech Talk, which I did some changes here and there. As you can see in the background, this is actually my custom made pieces I built by myself. So I like to do some things about what's in the tech world, how to navigate inside this. I will do my next episode will be more like into cybersecurity because I realized too many people got hacked. Take up all the of the Facebook got hacked, the Instagram got hacked, and etc. But no one understands why or how to navigate and protect them. So I'm going to do an episode where I walk people through what to do, how to prevent this from happening, and how to look out for it before it happens again. Very good. Then find me on YouTube at CBN Tech Talk. Very good. All right, guys. Chat, y'all have been lovely. And I can't do this without you all supportive. You know what? Y'all are the most SB Nation. Y'all outstanding over here. I appreciate y'all so much. And thank you for being here. This is another good Friday. I will see you guys soon. But listen, if you don't see me this weekend, you'll definitely see me and Black Man on Monday at 7.30 Eastern. But until then, y'all have a good weekend, a blessed weekend, and a good night. Thank you. Go get y'all some clothes. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts say too are scared to usher off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here. I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink. You and me was in love. Think about what your crew think. I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard. Your pops probably want to beat my to death and take up to my casket. But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing over nothing, cussing instead of and watching the death of discussions that we once had, days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars with the poets at sunset. It's funny how love can fall out the foreground, get pushed into the back of your mind, we used to twist a spliff and laugh and relax. Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reasons, so I ask, does forever ever happen, or is it always fade to black? I can't say, no, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.